Are we on? Are we live? Are we ready to go? What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday, uh, September 18th. September 18th. Damn, I feel like it was just September 1st the other day. But here we are talking about Atlanta Season 4, Episodes 1 and 2, which premiered this Thursday. Uh, we're back. We are back in the A. We are back with our squad. We're back with Van. Darius, Earn, and Al, and they are back in Atlanta, which I know makes me happy. I know it makes a lot of you all happy. Uh, but the one thing that is, uh, you know, maybe not the happiest, it's the final season. It is the last season of arguably one of the best shows in the last decade, one of my favorite shows of all time. But uh, hey, we, we got a long way. We got eight more weeks before we get to that, that in line. But before we get there, we got some episodes to talk about. And that is premiere episode and episode two, uh, which we will be discussing, kind of breaking down picking out maybe Easter eggs or picking out things uh, I might have missed, you all might have missed, um, funniest moments, uh, moments that maybe didn't work, as well as, you know, thoughts, theories, predictions of what we hope to get in this fourth and final season of Atlanta. And I have some guests coming on. I was a little late on sending the link, so I'm, I got some guests that's going to be popping in maybe in a little bit. But before we even get there, again, if this is your first time tuning in, I appreciate you all. I know it's Football Sunday. It's House of the Dragons, which if you all are part of the channel, you know we, we go live later tonight watching the episodes and breaking them down with an after show after that. But I appreciate you all. We got 16 people in the in the chat now. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up goes a long way. Helps the algorithm push out the video to any and every Atlanta fan, and we can all have a great discussion today. Uh, share the video as well. You know, hit that little share button, man. If y'all have a an IG or a, a Twitter or whatnot, and you all know some people that like this show and and want to, you know get more people to talk about it because it is a great show then definitely hit that share button and of course leave your thoughts in the live chat y'all this is why we're doing it to get some some talking going some interactions going and have a good time so uh let's see who we got in the chat we got my home girl meg in the chat uh who's excited uh elliot about to smile again. <laughs> i appreciate you meg uh and hopefully we can we can catch up later tonight talk some um some uh, House of them Dragons, y'all. Uh, but I got my first guest in the waiting room, and I want to keep her in there too long. I had the opportunity to have her on one of the House of Dragons conversations uh, and just been a, a huge fan of her channel, her platform, her flavor, her swag, her, her vibe. So excited to have her on to talk about Atlanta. I'm talking about the one and only L. What is going on? Hey, how are y'all? Hey, we doing good on this Sunday. I see you rocking your jersey. Uh, you got oh, my your, Saints your, your jersey, baby. Yeah. Who that? It's who that Sunday. And I got the game on right behind me, so I can. There we go. Oh. Oop, did we go out for a second? Are we back? Yeah, I oh, there hear you. We go. There we go. Who? Uh, who's your Saints playing? Who that? Who that? Who they playing? We got the Buccaneers today. We at home and we playing the Buccaneers. Yeah. So. The, the the goat, huh? Tom Brady. Yeah, it's gonna be a good game. They okay. they are favored to win, but you know. We don't, yeah. we, we don't claim that. We don't, we don't win yeah, it's, it's, it's a dub, it's a dub. Yeah. <laughs> well, L, listen, I'm so appreciative of your time and you coming on, talking about this show. This is my first time kind of interacting with you on Atlanta, um, yeah. and I'm very excited to see your thoughts on it and, of course, this episode. But before we uh, get into the breakdown, and we're going to have some other guests coming in a little bit later, but why don't you let the people at home know who you are and when they can find your uh, amazing content? Sure, cool. So I'm Watch With Me, LB. I give you fun, fresh, and funny ranch reviews and recaps. All my favorite movies and TV shows. I started my channel one year ago, two days ago, on September 16th. I dropped my very first YouTube video, and it's been a blast ever since. I'm getting ready to drop my Handmaid's Tale episode one and two recap today. Um, I'm editing it. And for those of you who might be content creators, know how difficult that editing process can be. Um, but I'm dropping that tonight. So if y'all will give me a, a subscribe and Check out my channel. Um, I, I'm trying to get into YouTube shorts as well. So I have a couple shorts on my channel too. But I just like to have fun and talk about, excuse me, talk about the, the movies and shows that I'm watching. I'm going to be checking out uh, The Woman King on tomorrow. I have a recap for that. And then I'm also going to be dropping my recap for episode six, five or six for House of the Dragon. So that's me in a nutshell. And I appreciate y'all watching. Ready to talk about Atlanta. Yes, yes. And uh, yes, AZ. The the accent, yes, she is. Uh, this is the swag I'm talking about, y'all. I'm with that swag from down south. I mean, I'm trying to hide it because I'm trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to I love it. Give it to y'all too, too much, and I, it never works. So I need to just stop. I said that last time. I'm gonna just let it go. 
Listen, I've been to New Orleans once, and it was it was so fire. I got to go back. It's, Food, the energy, the, the atmosphere was just fire. It was so yeah, fire. you got to come back, and maybe we could do like a like a live watch or something. Like when you come, that would be dope, right? We could have like let's get it beverages and some good food. That would be so oh, fun. Yeah. For the first time ever, I had uh, it was uh, and this was before I started stop eating meat, but I had a yeah. uh, fried alligator. Oh yeah, um, mm-hmm. and yeah. <laughs> Pretty good, pretty good. Look, the food down there again, the, the fun, the people, the energy is, is something else. It's something yeah, else, yeah. It's good, we got the energy here with us from come, it, it will determine what you get. So, yeah. we, we have a lot of we eat a lot of meat here, but we do a lot of seafood too, obviously, right. because we're on the water. So, you know, it's a, it's plenty of options, and I eat everything all the time. So, you, you know, that doesn't matter to me at all. I can find somewhere to eat. There we go. There we go. Well, again, again, everyone's loving the accent. Everyone's loving the swag. Again, by the Thank time this know. video is finally uploaded, I'm going to have L's uh, information in the description of this video. So again, shout out to everyone joining us live. Uh, shout out to Nine um, Nerd Yards. Uh, we'll love, definitely, man. We could definitely link up and, and talk some Atlanta. And I know you're a Marvel fan too, so for sure, man. But L, yeah. let's talk about, before we get into episodes one and two, I want to know your, your general opinion how you, how you, how do you feel about the show atlanta do you have a, fir- a certain season that you prefer over others and then how did you feel about that third season and then we'll obviously get into today's discussion so just general take on atlanta and how did you feel about last season first of all i love atlanta okay i love seeing um black folks in their element and i love having um young creative artists at the helm of a major network show and that's what atlanta is Love Donald Glover. Love the entire cast. Um, really enjoy the show. I don't have a specific season per se. The first season was great, right? Because it was new and fresh and we hadn't seen it before. But right. I do have specific episodes that I am obsessed with and watch them over and over again. Obviously, yeah. Teddy Perkins is my jam. It is the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that ostrich egg, I just... Ooh, it was a tough one, but it was really, yeah. really great. Um, and I really love the Alligator Man episode with Cat Williams. They were obviously coming standing back, out. like coming back. back. Yeah, I saw that. I saw he was yeah. in, the, in the um package for for the final season. So, right, right. um, <clears throat> in general, I feel like the show is fantastic. It's a beautifully written and shot um show. I love the fact that you know usually they have trouble lighting black people. Mm. Um, and a lot of times when we're on screen, we're not lit properly. But when, you know, black folks are behind the camera, we can light each other correctly. And so yep. the cinematography and the lighting for this show is beautiful. Yep. Um, the third season, I mm, mm, <laughs> it was a tough one for me. All right. I watched every episode because yeah, I got yeah. support, but it right, was a right, tough right. one for you, girl. And I was confused. And I really just missed being in Atlanta. Uh, I, I'm, I'm grateful that they wanted to make sure that we know that black folks travel, that we have mm-hmm. you know experiences outside of our hometown. But I really love the fact that it's a show about Atlanta and Atlanta is a character in the show. Yep. And they took out one of the main characters, i.e. Atlanta. And it, it just wasn't yeah. what I needed the third season. No. I hear you. I hear you. it was very experimental, which I yeah. enjoy, but I know that yeah, it yeah. was definitely a change of pace, especially being off of the air for four years at that point right. um, when we came back. So I hear you, I hear yeah, you. And they gave um, us four episodes and we didn't see anybody. I it was, was like, so I low, yeah, very uh yeah, it was a departure. I hear you, I hear you. But we're back in the A. And speaking of yeah. being back, I got another one of my guests who is making a return. Two of my guests that are making a return. Uh, big fans of theirs. Excited to get this panel together. I'm bringing the first one here. Uh, Struggle TV Reviews. Tyra, I am so excited to have you back and talk about this episode. What is going on? How we doing? How we doing? Like, oh, hey, Elliot. Hey. L Tyra Tyra L. You know, Elliot be putting people together. I'm so surprised. I'm, I didn't I'm know. Tired. Like you're like it, it's really nice to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> but we we this is the fourth season, uh Tyra. We gotta bring we gotta bring all the the, the people together and, and interact with each other and talk about this show. But how are you doing on this Sunday? I'm fine. Like I was like happy that you gave me the invitation because I felt like I was a little late putting my review up. But to just I was surprised the show came back so early. And then when I went and watched it, yeah. I was like Yes, this is this is what I've been waiting for. I am so yeah. hyped about the season and what we what we're gonna get because this is it. So I know they're gonna go out with a bang. That is true. That is true. Well, Tyra, before we uh, introduce my next guest here and get this conversation started, why don't you go ahead and let the fine folks at home know who you are, where they can find your content? 
Oh man, I am struggle reviews TV. I am like all over everything on my YouTube. Of course, my handle is on the screen. You can go follow me on my Instagram to stay up on my latest content. Like I do, I do a little bit of everything, but I mostly specialize in throwback movies. They actually are up and it's a paywall for those. So if you're interested in that, come on over to the channel. But there's other things like uh, TV shows, current movies, like it's just the whole gumbo over on my channel. So come over and have a good time. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. And shout out to Tyra on uh she's like knocking on the door to AK. It's right around the corner. I know that. And also shout out to L. I know you got your one year anniversary. So it's, yeah. it's a time to celebrate. Atlanta's back. We got some great content creators. And speaking of great, I got my man coming back to the channel, but he, he looks a little bit different, y'all. So don't be alarmed when you see this individual. This is the, the, the guy. This is the, the guy here, but he's just gonna look a little bit different, you know. And I'm talking about my one and only my homie, B Avery from just my opinion reviews. That's that's great, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. That's him. Hey. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> you doing good, B. How you doing today, man? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Ready to toss some Atlanta. Yes, sir. Well, B, man. I mean, it was, we went season three was different. Uh, the, the hair is different, man. But you know, why don't you go ahead and describe uh, the, the new look <laughs> to the people, and then also uh, where they can find your content, my friend. Well, first, before I do that, what's up, Tyra? How you doing, ma'am? It is so it's good to see you. Spicy over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what's up? How you doing? What's up? I'm fine. I'm liking the braids. Thank you. Thank you. And my apologies, Brandon. That is L to L, Brandon. Oh, yeah. 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 I was about to get to you next. How you doing? How you doing, L? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Nice to meet you. Good. I, I have to say, I'm loving the accent. Please don't try to hide it. It is great. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is you and, and you know, that's, just keep doing what you're doing. Yes. But um, I'm, I'm B. Avery with Just My Opinion Reviews. You can follow me. Uh, my handle is on the screen. And, you know, just like Elliot, I talk about what I'm passionate about as far as movies and television. So I do movie reviews. I do weekly recaps of some of my favorite shows. I do do trailer reactions. Uh, if I'm lucky, I may interview a star here and there, you know, attend a roundtable interview. I also do lives and I have a uh, live movie news roundup show um, every Sunday where I do compile all the, the movie news and entertainment news and just kind of have a show either by myself or a panel of guests. You know, I've had Tyra and Elliot there before. And so, yeah, just a kind of a mix of everything, you know, super nerd geek over here. My favorite type of content is that martial arts in that. Uh, comic book adaptations you know you have a movie or tv show uh, about to release as far as that's concerned i'm gonna be right there first person in the line and so um if you want to follow me please uh go ahead my information in the description i'm about to hit 40k as well and um yeah i'm just trying to grow on this youtube thing Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, this is the panel, y'all. This is the panel here as, as people are excited to see these beautiful faces and so am I and, and to talk about this show. So roundtable style. And I had Brandon on the channel uh, when we talked season three and, and Tyra, but uh, we're here to talk season four. So just to start with uh, the Tyra, your, I know you were I saw a brief clip of your review. I didn't want to dive too deep because I want to kind of be surprised at your thoughts today. But what did you think about this uh, this premiere? And do you feel like we're back in Atlanta? We are definitely back in Atlanta. Like, no shots at season three. Like, I loved a whole lot about season three, but season three was a different show for a minute. Like, it it was great, but being black, like, it was a whole shift just going yeah. back to Atlanta as soon as the episode started. I absolutely loved the first and the second episode. Like, I got really emotionally involved in that second episode, and they, they just touched on so much so briefly. And 30 minutes, like, it, it was amazing. I'm so glad that we are back in Atlanta. So glad. I agree. I agree. <laughs> L, your thoughts on being back in Atlanta and this first uh, these two first episodes? I'm so glad to be back in Atlanta. I thought it was great. Um, I love visiting Atlanta and I love trying to see if I can recognize or um, decipher some of the things that they say that native Atlantans would Atlantians? Atlantans? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, would know. Um, but I thought the first two episodes were great. I thought it felt like Atlanta with that, that tinge of weird and like kooky off kilter kind of you think it's going this way but it goes the opposite way i thought it was great um and it was very much the opposite of again season three season three was like a like going from an hbcu to a pwi and it was like a big <laughs> oh, shock. it like slapped me in my face so i'm glad to be back in atlanta for the final season i hear you b what about you man how did it feel to be back in atlanta or did you feel like we're back in atlanta does it still kind of feel a little little off uh off base 
Come on, uh, I, I am overjoyed that we're back in Atlanta, and it does seem a bit off base, but that's what Atlanta is. It's not your just straightforward show. It kind of is obvious, but also challenges you to, you know, always see what's between the lines. And so um, I like that. And not only did I, I mean, I, we're back in Atlanta, but we have the whole crew for both episodes, you know. Yeah. You know, last season, sometime you get the, the episode with the main cast, but sometime it's a random episode that doesn't have anything to do with anything. And that may be fine. But for me and my taste, I'm glad that both episodes had every character in it that we know and love with everyone having a good amount of screen time. I actually like Darius. You know, he's a character that really gets on my nerve. He was coming through, you know, this this first episode, well, both of them. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it, man. I'm, I'm glad we're back in Atlanta. And uh, I can't wait for more. I hear you. Well, I I'm, I couldn't say it better myself. Definitely back. Uh, feel good to be back. And the title number one, the most Atlanta. That's that just tells you what kind of show, what kind of episode we're getting into. And uh, my boy Brandon just kind of alluded to it. Uh, starting with you, L. We opened this episode with our, but which that he's my favorite character because he's just so off kilter. He's so random. He's like he's one of those people in life that we might have come across where it's just like. They get their, they find themselves in the most crazy situations, and they seem to be unfeathered, un, unbothered by the situations, which is a perfect summary into him walking into this chaos with the the looting and, and the rioting going on. Which we'll talk about uh, how that ties to 2020 George Floyd situation. But L, how did you feel about opening this season? Darius with a uh, air fryer in hand, trying to return it with all this madness going on. It was it was Darius one on one. Darius would be the only person to park in the parking lot or walk up to a place that's actively being looted and still want to go in there and make a return. And I remember thinking that the guy behind the counter was out here bugging too, because I would have never been able to process that return. He like scanned it and like went in the computer to do the return and was going to give him his money back. So he was a little nutty too, but I thought it was really funny. And I thought, um, I remember thinking like, I wonder if they're going to, make this looting a part of a bigger story like they're looting right. because of something mm -hmm. but in atlanta you know they want us to feel like they might just be looting the loot like it's no <laughs> rhyme to it, and they just out here trying to steal stuff and so that's you know what it ended up being and i thought it was really funny because he was just that's very darius he's unbothered he's like i don't yes this building is on fire but i have to use the bathroom i'm gonna just run in right here <laughs> And I'm going to use the bathroom and I'm going to come on out and the building can finish burning. So I love that. And I love seeing his whole unbothered. I could, I can't never tell if he's like high or if he's not <laughs> if that's his personality, you know, right. but I like not knowing that either. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. It's almost as if it's just like this kind of normal to him just being his. It doesn't matter what's around him. He's just going to be him all the time. But uh, Tyra, your thoughts on, again, him him running, <laughs> him going to the store with all this nonsense going on, which I guess kind of alludes to. And for those that remember from season three, we were obviously like two, three years delayed. Pandemic has some reasons to do with those delays. But it seems like we're in 2020 uh, as far as like timeline goes. Uh, but your thoughts on Darius Air Fryer returning it the guy robbing them uh that whole scene playing out before we get into miss karen here it's the same like yeah. <laughs> it's the same like this this is darius like i don't think we got too far removed from darius even i think when we went to um season three he was still being darius like i feel like i don't know it's a Dar i love darius he's a difficult character because sometimes i feel like they don't give him any growth or any room to go he's just always kind of offbeat but this is who he is, and I, I love him for this. Like, I absolutely enjoy just the offbeat, random, like, yeah, I'm trying to return this air fryer. I, I don't care what's going on back there, but it, it was great. Like, I, I'm hoping that we, well, I felt like we did get it in episode two, some growth in him. I don't want him to just continue to be just that character, and he comes in, like, for the puns and, like, the, the weirdness, and then he goes off, and he's just the offbeat character the entire time. But I absolutely loved it, and I thought it was hilarious. I agree. I agree. It, it is. And it, to be, I know B is, uh, he's a character that it kind of grows on you. But one of the things I do like about him is the mystery. Like, we don't know his family. <laughs> what, you know, he stays with Al. Like, how, he doesn't seem to have any uh, money at all at any point in time. But what did you think <laughs> about Darius B in this scene and just uh, getting the situation at hand? 
Yeah, man. Like y'all, I love them too. And <clears throat> like you just said, Elliot, he is a character that does have to grow on you or for me. And he has because um, I love this energy, but he seems like he's dangerous. You know, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I um, you have to have some special type of mind just to be that calm and at ease when there's literally chaos going around, especially when somebody's coming at you with a knife when he jumped out of um, Al's car. But what stood out to me was when he first got to the door of Target, leaving the place, well, mm -hmm. first of all, he didn't like, you know, he realized what was going on. Well, he did know, but he didn't want to take anything himself. But when it, when he first confronted the white lady, you know, the way he rolled his eyes and went around her, you know, that was like a different <laughs> side of Darius that I've never seen before. Like, I mean, like, it, I, I was like, man, this dude would really kill somebody if it comes down to it. He doesn't want to. But yeah. in that small instance right there, you know, I, I just kind of saw like a little spark of fire, you know, and it kind of shook me a bit, but I liked it a lot. Uh, but like, <laughs> yeah, like most of y'all, man, uh, he, he's a character, man. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a fan. I'm becoming a fan. Yeah. Now, that's so funny. You bring up that he, he does have this sense of like chill ease. But I wonder yeah. um, and, and from the trailer, it seems like he, there's a moment where he gets a little bit emotional, which is going to be very interesting to see how uh, what other layers and depths we get from the character. But it's a, to that point, uh, starting with I just go back right back to you, B, the the Karen situation, the, the wheelchair uh, stabby stabby lady. Uh, of course, a lot of us have already pointed out that this is a re reenactment of the George Floyd uh, protesters and all the situation going on at hand. And was it when you saw this beat, was it something that immediately clicked to you? Like, uh, this is Atlanta bringing back some, you know, uh, real life situations to the to the play. And, and how did you think the reality? Yeah, that yeah. for the most part. Yeah. I just couldn't realize what story it was, you know, um, and, but it actually was a target. Uh, I think yeah, in real life and in the show. And so I was just like, OK, wait a minute. Is this wheelchair lady going to pop up? And she did. And it was hilarious. I mean. The audacity to do that, you know, like, you, you I, I don't know. I mean, she played herself like the victim. You mm -hmm. know, of course, you're going to be blasted with a fire extinguisher if you have a knife, you know. Uh, and, man, the thing about this scene right here is um, it's funny, but this was possibly one of the times in my entire life where I was the most angry. And for them to be able <clears throat> to take uh, this moment and make a joke out of it without being distasteful um, is pretty good writing to me. And so um, none of that anger came back when I was watching the scene, but, you know, I, I was laughing and, and embracing it. And, you know, I was like, man, I can't wait to talk about this and, you know, look up the story again to get all the reminders. But, yeah, it, it, was, it was perfect. Yeah, and to that point, and toss it to you, Tyra. It, it will be interesting to see again, knowing that they uh, wrote this this season, the last two seasons dur during twenty eighteen, all the way to twenty twenty. What other things they might bring back up during those those times? So, like Brandon said, it was two. I can't believe it's been two years, but that was a very just obviously with for many different reasons a very interesting time in in, in history. But your thoughts on uh, wheelchair lady Tyra and how they kind of brought it back to the to the forefront. I did not know what this was at first, but as soon as they said, she has a knife, she got a knife. I was like, oh, we are going here. It, it connected so hard. I was like, I can't. It's amazing. Just like what we got with last season when we brought up the uh, the first episode of season three. And it was like and, until it clicks and you're like, I can't believe I forgot about this. Like right. they, they bring you back to a certain moment. But I was feeling the same way because I was like, this was such a tough time for everybody. So for them to bring it back and use it, you know, for that social commentary, but make it funny. I thought that was so amazing. And just the audacity for her to be the T-1000 in this episode. Like she was so relentless. Like just, it, it was crazy. It was the play on her following Darius this entire time, just thinking that he stole this air fryer. And just in comparison to the real story of that lady feeling like it was her civic duty enough to right. stab people to protect mm -hmm. Target and, and the looting, like, it's crazy. And it, even though this is, you know, a, a crazy scene and it's like, oh my God, like how, why would she follow him for this long? But it's, it's the same in comparison to the real life story. Like, why would you even put yourself in harm's way, stab mm. people in your wheelchair? <laughs> And like you, it's, it's 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 just crazy. Like it's like stranger than fiction type situation, but this yep. is a real life situation. Like don't do that, lady. It, it was crazy. It's a crazy time, but they made it funny, and I loved it. And tossing to you, L, uh, following up with Tyra said in regards to what I love about the show is it, like you, like Brandon said too, it reminds you that 
of these older stories, but it also plays into the absurdity of how crazy this story is. Like if you heard someone off the street saying, dude, it was a, a woman at Target stabbing people because they were looting. Like, no way. Get out of here with that. Do you see it on video? But then obviously seeing it in the show, if you didn't know about it, you'd be like, oh, man, that's that's hilarious until you actually look it up and find out that this is something that actually happened. So, uh, L, your thoughts on this scene? And like Tyra said, the T one thing. Yes, she was very relentless. <laughs> and that is a Karen thing to do is just no matter if you wrong, which 99% of the time they are wrong, they will continue to go right. uh, to, to the end, to the end of the world to make sure that they're right. Yeah. And I agree with, with B. I was thinking about, I remember, I remember this. I don't, I, I remember specifically feeling like extra angry about that because now is not the time lady. It's already, it's too hot right now. It's, it's enough <laughs> yeah. stuff happening and here you go adding fuel to the flame. Right. And so, I remember thinking about how I felt then and agree with you in that I remember giggling at it at this point. But yeah. what really sent me over the edge was when she came down the interstate and then she was like <laughs> in an abandoned field. And I remember thinking like this lady's battery for her wheelchair is off the chain. Like how yeah. is it not dead at this point? She had traveled 45 minutes on a Tesla's wheelchair. Tesla's of all wheelchairs. And she must be magic because them wheelchairs go like two miles an hour. And she yeah. went all over Atlanta trying to get to this guy, right? And I remember thinking that was so ingenious. Like we're not even going to Think about logic because that's not logical. But again, Atlanta <laughs> is not logical in so many ways, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I just <laughs> I don't know. And then the second thing I thought about was and B, I don't know. I, I feel like you from Tech. Are you from you you in Texas? Okay, I I hit a long star state in your yeah. <laughs> so one thing I know, and I don't know where the rest of y'all are, but one thing I know about the deep south is that we carry weapons on us. And I remember thinking because it's Atlanta, somebody was going shoot that poor lady because we <laughs> yeah. are just always equipped if you catch what I'm saying. So um it was a really funny scene and I loved how it carried through and in, literally until the last minute of the show. Like show went off and we were still dealing. And her name is Christine. And mm -hmm. I read that her name is Christine like the movie back in the day Christine about the car that was possessed. Right. That's possessed. <laughs> that's that a good one, catch. You know, like yeah, that. Yeah. And I thought that was really funny too. <laughs> so I just again kind of going back to the really creative writing yep. and storytelling that this show is is always given us whether we like it or not but this was right. really really funny it was very funny i definitely agree with you all and it's good to have like like you all said during that time obviously it was it was hostile it was frustrating but as time goes by it's not that we're under you know obviously it's still a serious situation and her obviously her biggest ways but it's still kind of funny to look at especially when her ass was getting sprayed with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> very funny stuff but we're going to check back in with Darius a little bit later but i want to kind of pivot the conversation starting with you b on uh owl man uh alfred is in the car he's in traffic which by the way and also, I'm from I'm, I live in St. Louis currently, but I, I used to live in Atlanta and I'm from Chicago and whatnot. But going back to being living in Atlanta for a little bit, without a doubt, the worst traffic I've ever experienced in my entire life. <laughs> the absolute worst traffic. You can do exactly what Darius did in this episode go shop, Christmas gift shopping. <laughs> you could probably go to school for four years and, and you'll come back in the car and this person's still in that lane. But we see uh, B that Al is trying to leave Atlanta. He's trying to, he said he's, he doesn't want to, he doesn't know where he wants to go, which kind of in my mind, this goes back to his character art that he's, he's lost, man. There's something going on mentally, emotionally. He maybe need to get that therapist that, uh, that Ern's going to. But <laughs> your thoughts, uh, B, on, on what you hope to get with Al this season, especially after finding out that his, uh, one of his favorite rappers recently passed away. Is that a, foreshadowing for his career uh maybe man i, I just kind of hope he finds peace you yeah. know because he does seem depressed you know he does seem like something is going on you know um and it, it's funny because it seemed like his dream had, had come true you know from where he started in season one right. but it's right. not all the what he hoped for you know mm -hmm. or you know may or maybe that he just not motivated anymore because he's like okay i've been there done that what am i going to do next and that's kind of why he doesn't know where he wants to go um, I also found it interesting. He said he want yeah, he, he doesn't know where he want to go. He's trying to get to the airport um, to go to, he mentioned Jamaica, but you know, as soon as he heard that song on the radio and started putting the pieces together, you know, the, the airport idea just went away. You know, he just completely forgot about that. I forgot to mention right. it in my video as well. Uh, but mainly, man, I, I, kind of, I feel sorry for him because I just think he's at a point to where, you know, uh, his dreams are not what he hoped them to be. 
and um you know what, what was the rapper's name blue blood i don't, blue I don't blood, know the, yeah i don't know the significance of that if it popped up in the past i, I don't really remember but you know it, it, it they really had an effect on him and seems like it's going to change his path um you know he was going to go this way but now he's going to make a left or something like that so i'm eager to see what's going to happen uh but i'm i'm, I'm hurting for my boy over here Yes, I'm very uh, intrigued to learn more about uh, this, like you said, be the kind of that that happiness. If there's ever a moment that he's going to find that and, and maybe too, cause not that I, you know, I assume his mom died of, of uh, maybe just natural causes. But I wonder if we're going to get any more of his mom's storyline, because that's obviously a pivotal uh, part of his life. And we never knew what, you know, exactly what happened to her. So uh, but something that and tossing it to you, Tyra, something that uh, B just brought up in regards to to. Um, the rapper, I know you had, an, I saw it in your title, and you, and you mentioned in your review, uh, and a lot of people have mentioned that as far as uh, B's question in regards to is, if it's a real life act or a rapper they were alluding to, uh, if you want to take it away, Tyra, I believe a lot of people are saying that this might have some remnants of uh, MF Doom, who uh, yes. a very similar situation where he passed away in December or passed away in October, and his wife came out and said that he passed away like months ago. So if you want to uh, maybe elaborate on that, Tyra, and also give me your thoughts on uh, what you think about Al. Oh man, Al is lost. Oh, Al is lost. I was so, uh, when we heard him say like, I'm just trying to get away, maybe go to Jamaica. I'm like, y'all just got back. So <laughs> we see that, you know, the way that he was feeling, it had nothing to do with kind of the surroundings and them touring and being everywhere. It, he still right. feels the same even back home. Right. And I feel like he's so lost because it's like, I worked so hard for this career. But immediately, I think as soon as he started to get a little bit of celebrity and he just wants to be Al, like he, he he's never been comfortable with being in the spotlight and now it's just like you know what i need to find something i need to reconnect you know only the real ones know about blue blood i'm a real one let me you know connect to something like it's, he's just so like out of it and so lost but yeah. in the sense of you know connecting to an artist like blue Blood, which is you know everybody getting that mf doom I was like, oh man, like it, it took me back because I love MF Doom as an artist, but he's very much so an underground artist. And, you know, mm. everybody loves, oh, you know, they did it for the culture. They were great. They were awesome. But they never gave anybody their just due or their praise or even cared enough to show up, you know, to the funeral or, you know, pay respects or give people flowers while they're here. And it's just like, well, dang, if they didn't, you know, show up or do something for somebody who was, you know, a real one and for the culture, what What's does that mean for yep. me? Is this something that I really want to continue to do? And I, I love the way it was handled and they brought up you know the brilliance and the, the comic books and just the elaborate journey that we the, the scavenger hunt that we uh had him set up for our go on like that yeah. was totally you know surreal and crazy but it, it's still in the realm of an artist like an mf doom but it's just like you know what is it all for if you know i have all this greatness and all, all this career and all this money but when you know it's time for people to show up for me nobody actually shows up like he's just really lost and he's looking for something to connect to but i love the connection to the state of hip-hop or even uh the way that he was set up and it was the skeleton in there it made me think of i don't know i i can't even remember the artist but the artist that passed away and they like set him up in a club and had people come view and party in the club or something like that like <laughs> you know it's, it's just crazy but it's like this this is you know what's really happening even though it's in this surreal episode of atlanta these things are really occurring yeah i mean we even last season with the the whole tupac uh oh. um, cult situation was crazy <laughs> yeah. the way it took him out but yeah very very much so uh, an appreciation to the to the real ones and Again, I think it's going to be really interesting to see his uh, his trajectory as far as his career goes this season, if it's yeah. going to be something he wants to continue to be a rapper or, or, or maybe retire. But, L, your thoughts on uh, this um, MF Doom connection, if you had any other rappers or anyone that you thought of that you might have listened to that had a similar type of situation where it was kind of looked over or you know, underappreciated artists that passed away maybe too early. And, of course, your thoughts on the, on the state of mind that uh, Al's in this new season so far. So... First of all, it's great take, Tyra. That's why I love you, sis. You, you <laughs> thank you. You serve us up on the regular. Yes, That's yes. great. That was a great take. But um, I, I, I didn't. I don't know. I didn't know MF Doom. I don't. I don't. Um, I'm not into like underground hip hop. I'm very surface level with my hip hop. I don't know underground stuff. And um, so I, you know, again, I appreciate you giving me information because now I can do my googles. I will get trapped in a in a. In a, oh, you go oh, Atlanta like, rabbit holes. Go do. A, oh yeah, a, I, I know for a fact I'm not getting nothing done because I'm gonna have to do <laughs> my googles on that. But um, for some reason, I, and and you know, I don't because I don't know MF Doom. I when he went on a scavenger hunt, which was awesome because I love scavenger hunts. 
when he got to that strip mall, I don't know for some reason it gave me Nipsey Hustle. Yeah, so it gave me the marathon mm -hmm. corner, Crenshaw and Slauson or whatever the corner was because it, it was very it looked like it almost right. Um, and that's what I thought about when I when I saw you know where he ended up. But as it relates to L, I think that every single person in this show has been depressed since we first laid eyes on them. Mm -hmm. Nobody has you know really. Um, dealt with any of the issues that they have displayed, right? And it, that's a problem that I have, and I'm I'm a social worker. And so um, I social work everybody on the TV. It's annoying. But in this show, you know, when we first meet Ern and, and Van, they in this small apartment, and Ern ain't got no money, and they're struggling, and it's a new baby, and Al, you know, living in a trap, and Darius, of course, is living wherever Al is. And, you know, he even got put out of Princeton, and, you know, it's yep. all these things <laughs> And these are major life things that these people have not dealt with. Right. We just get pieces and, and, you know, small pieces of their lives. And the pieces that we get might not even connect. So mm -hmm. we are left to put together the picture of what we think they are. But I can tell you for a fact that Earn being in therapy and the reactions that he had, I wasn't surprised with that at all. And the yeah. way that Darius laughed at Earn, am I skipping? I'm skipping. Sorry. Oh no, you good. You good. It all comes together. It all comes together. Um, yeah, yeah. The way that he, but the way that Al responded to Earn when he said he was going to therapy and laughed in his face. Right. That's very much what people do, right? But it's mm. like a, it's like a, a, a reflection. Like it's like, <laughs> you getting help for yourself? Yeah. Stupid. Like I would never. Blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, it's very. You know what I mean? That's yep. what people do. But as it relates to Al, I just think whatever he's it, wherever he ends up, he's obviously going to be there because he's not dealing with the root problem of whatever it is. And I do think that he saw a lot of himself in Blue Blood and that, you know, he had this impact on Al and five people showed up for him and not, you know, nobody was willing to go through, you know, all these different things to get to, <laughs> you know, him and to see what it was that he had in store for them. Um, and I think he, that is foreshadowing for him. So I hope that Al takes his little money and go buys him a, a property and, and invest his money and is not a rapper and gets the help that he needs because he definitely does need help. Well said, well said. And we'll definitely check check back in with Al because I, I definitely want to talk about that Easter egg hunt that he goes on. But before we move on to our favorite uh couple, on again, off again couple, uh shout out to G Mac uh the second. Um Go new, uh, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, probably am. Was his name the rapper that was popped in the club after he died? That's who I mm -hmm. thought of. Uh, what, yeah, I don't know who that again. I'm, I'm very similar to L. My uh, underground hip hop knowledge is very <laughs> limited. I, back in the day when I was in high school, I used to know all right. the underground rappers, but nowadays yeah. I couldn't tell you. I'm, I'm uh, way, I'm above. On, uh, above ground, I don't know who's underground at this point with rapper scene go. So I don't know, uh, Tyra. I know you. Uh, you brought up yes. MF. Are you familiar with this rapper here? Yes, I mean I don't. I didn't really uh, listen. He's more of you know a new age kind of SoundCloud s okay. you know maybe gotcha. drill gotcha. type rapper. That's you know not my not my partake. I'm more so into the MF Doom. You know somebody who did it for the culture, very gotcha. conscious, you know conscious lyricist type thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that that was something else. The way that they propped him up and had a, had a whole you know celebration in the party. Oh, that was the rapper. Was referring to yes. Okay, <laughs> they put this man, man. They put this man in the. In the in they the do that room. down here quite often. Like they yeah. they they don't they don't they they do the formaldehyde or whatever that process is, yeah, but they yeah. do it in a way that they can prop them up at like a car table or mm -hmm. on a motorbike Jesus. or like in a car or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's what I thought about the whole, you know, the way that you have, you know, the the new all it's like it's more of a celebration, but mm. I think they had people paying, you know, to get in to see him and selling tickets type like it was a whole a situation. Little, yeah, a little blurry <laughs> blurring the lines there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. B, do you did you know who this rapper was by chance? Uh no idea. I have no okay. clue. That that flew over my head. I, I probably know the least about underground, above ground. You know, I I, I knew some underground stuff from you know from Texas day, yeah. twenty years ago, maybe some Swisher House or Dirty South Riders, but yeah. Oh, wow. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm 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 I don't know nothing. Yeah. Well, shout out to Mac. We'll point it out. Uh yeah, thank um, you the rapper there and Tyra, she's our hip hop uh, uh, expert today. So she can yes. let us know. She's going to fill us in y'all, but shout out to Mac with the super chat, but checking in. Uh, and I want to start with you, L checking in with Earn and um, Van. Last time we saw Van, things got out of hand uh, and, and very <laughs> curious to see where her mental mindset is this season. But uh, Earn and Van, are they, 
would you assume they're back together? They're just being casual, or the way I looked at, it, especially rewatching it, Earn spending more time with Van kind of alludes to as you talked about episode two. He's moving to L.A., so he's trying to get as much time with Van and his family before making that move or trying to find the right way to. Hey, hey, I'm gonna be moving. Can you come with me? Your thoughts on them, and then of course uh, this uh, this journey being lost at the Atlantic Station. So I think Ern and Van definitely have like some kind of soul tie on them. Like I don't <laughs> think they um, are together at this point, um, but I think that they probably will end up together. Um, but because you know, I'm don't if if my ex ever ask me, hey, you want to, I'm about to move. You want to move with me? No, sir. Have a seat. You go where you going, right? But if right. we're connected and we have a relationship in that, that's even a consideration. That's obviously like a deeper level of connection that they have, even though they share a daughter because millions of people share children all over the world yep, and yep, would yep. never even consider you <laughs> come with me across the country and uproot your life so that you can be where I'm at, but we not together. That's a little, you know, a little a little off, but I do think that they are very connected. I do think that they love each other because it was a comment that he made once they got to Atlantic Station. Like, I would never let you become one of them. Mm -hmm. Like, she was like, do you want to just leave me here and leave me stuck? Like one of your exes. And he was like, girl, I would never do that to you. You're not the same as, as them. You're not, you're on a different level. Um, and so that just kind of lets me know that they are very much connected and that um, also, when Ern was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go in the in the closet door," which I would have died. <laughs> in the lot. I would have never went in a dark parking lot door with no light and whatever. So he was like, "Oh, I'm wet go walls." And Van didn't let him go by himself. She right. told him ahead of time, like, "I'm really scared. I don't know what to do." She went with him. So you know, they're very much connected, and they probably always will be. I like them together. Um, I did expect to see Van like in a hospital somewhere, like <laughs> some kind of services because she completely freaked out the last time I saw her. Right, and I yeah. don't know how long ago that was. Yeah. Um, but she definitely needs some some assistance of the professional kind. Definitely. I mean, again, we'll talk about it when we get to episode two. That therapist needs to talk to the group therapy, maybe get it get it involved or a recommendation. They all need it. But uh, <laughs> be your thoughts on this dynamic, these two. And Elle brought up a good point regarding that Van, and when she followed him through that dark, mysterious, whatever we want to call it, uh, maybe that's foreshadowing that she may she might go with him. She might follow him to L.A. because she is kind of, I don't say tethered to this relationship, but maybe you know, she likes going on this this weird life called or this weird adventure called life. So your thoughts on their relationship and do you think they'll uh, stick together by the end of the season if Earn ultimately does move to L.A.? Uh, unless just something crazy off the wall happens, definitely, yes, 100 percent. I think that they are together now and I think they're going to stick together. And everything you said, El, well, well said, I, I love the energy, too. Good job. Good job. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was all over the place, even when they were running into their exes, you know, um, it wasn't just, you know, some petty concern or jealousy, you know, it was like, yeah. you know, th this is my, my significant other, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it, it's, man, I kind of want to talk about the therapy and tie it in, but I'm, I'm gonna wait, but it's just interesting. Well, I don't know how I want to say it, but I, I I'm they're together in my opinion. I, mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just save it for now. I, I think they're together. I think they're gonna make it. I love it, and uh, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen next. Definitely, definitely, Tyra. Your thoughts, and I guess we can kind of pivot over to just your your thoughts on what this symbolized as far as. Uh, and I've been to again when my short time living in Atlanta, I went to this uh, 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 mall. It, it, it's a lot of stuff. You can definitely get lost. I mean, from cars to people you walk in with, going with. It's it's a, it's a huge mall. But did you take anything significant away from what they were trying to? I don't know. Say with them running to their exes, people people being stuck in their yes. uh, in the jobs for. 15 years. definitely definitely i got yeah, all thanks. of that like first i got with them you know coming up the way that you know they're they're you know well versed and well traveled now i'm like y'all right. were just you know these same people in atlanta without much direction but now you know that you came up and y'all returned it's like oh you still here after all like yeah just mm. because y'all you know leveled up people are still here you know working their you know living their everyday lives and then there's that that sense of because as soon as they did it i was i was getting the vibe of you know all my exes living 
live in Texas. Yes. Like, <laughs> like at, at the point of you guys traveling and being all over the world, as soon as you, you know, come home, everything feels, you know, small. Like yep. you've kind of, yep. kind of risen above. It's just like, oh, like Atlanta, the same with L. Like, oh, we, we just need to get out of here. Like, no, this, this was home at first. This was, you know, it felt big when, you know, you weren't who you were. But now it's yeah. like, oh, things to just shrink when you're used to, you know, a certain type of thing that they've been exposed to well as long as they've been going over, you know, all, all the things that they've seen. And now you just come back and it's just like, damn, I can't even walk around without seeing an ex or somebody mm. I know or something familiar. And then there's that sense of getting, you know, stagnant and complacent and staying, you know, in the mall and that consumerism. I love how we, I think her name was Kenya. She's like, I went in here to get something for my dad and I came out with all this stuff and I didn't even go in there, you know, for what I went in there for. But mm. as far as their relationship, I absolutely do not think that they are together at this point. Mm. <laughs> I do not. I got something totally different watching it because um, as far as their relationship, especially with last season, I feel like um, Van plays a lot of, you know, mind games as far as the relationship. Like she's kind of hot and cold with him and he doesn't really know what it is. And I know like she has every right to be with how their relationship has went over, you know, the seasons. But I feel like he wants to be in a relationship with her, but from how he's acted and, you know, that fear of commitment time back into that therapy, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, she, she's nervous to, you know, jump right back in with him. So I feel like he was gearing up to, you know, spend that time with her just to go and leave and go to LA. I don't think he has any intentions of her coming with him because I don't think she, he feels like, you know, the trust is there or the relationship is there. Like, I think like when they, uh, slept together last season and he, you know, woke up and she was gone. Like, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, what's going going on here but yeah. we're just in this gray area that we continue to be in so I felt like when uh like he didn't say let's go in this dark you know symbolic <laughs> closet together she invited herself and it made me feel like you know when she just showed up last season out of yep. nowhere yep. and it, it's just like you know whatever she wanted to do you know the teaching the whole thing her life plan it didn't really work out so she's been kind of kind of figuring things out and we saw last season that she was so lost but she's still attaching herself to earn in some way but she doesn't mm -hmm. want to be with him because she's scared so it's just like we're going to do this now and i'm going to leave you here it's just like well no don't don't leave me here like i don't i don't want to be you know that ex baby mama who just lives in atlanta i don't want to be forgotten but it's like you can't be both things like if you want to embark she's going to have to be gay but i think they're going to end up together but it's going to you know take some work but she she's scared so i think he was just gearing up like i'm gonna leave you here <laughs> i'm gonna go see what's what and then you know if it's safe i'll come back to get you and it's just like uh, no no but yeah if you want to take that leap enough to go in that dark closet with yeah. him that means you know there's still something there because you didn't let him go alone but yeah. they weren't the only two in there kenya <laughs> yep you know, she came in there also like yeah, yeah i came in here too i followed y'all so it's just the i think it's going to be them figuring out what they want to be to each other and exactly what van wants to do before anybody moves anywhere because he was about to leave van in that, that parking lot yeah yeah <laughs> as he did his car Go ahead, I yeah. a question? so i just want to clarify tyra because at first i was going to ask you so you think that earn does not want to be with van but van wants to be with earn but now you feel that neither one of them want to be with either one of them no i I think they want to be with each other. I think more so uh Earn has been like waiting, trying to, you know, read her and figure out what's what. And when I think it's something like you you're disappearing or oh, I can't even go off of last season because that was a whole nother situation. Oh, a whole but <laughs> they've always been in a gray area of their off and on relationship. And now with him moving, I feel like he wants to be with her, but he's just unsure. So it's just like I think he's giving up on the thought that maybe she, you know, doesn't want to be with me. I love her, but she doesn't want to be with me. I think so. I'm I'm, I'm thinking of the Germany episode yeah mm -hmm. and she was she was pretty vocal like i want to be with you i don't want this half-ass stuff yeah so i just i don't see that going anywhere mm -hmm. especially with earn on the come up but that's just me you know <laughs> and i mean now we know too and, and definitely uh want to hear your thoughts on that l on, on b's question but i think too because he's at a different position in life you know he has yeah. condo he has all these you know he's he's better positioned to be financially there for his family as he was in that first two seasons so maybe now that he does have that somewhat financial freedom he can feel more free within this relationship but l your thoughts on their relationship status and was there anything you any symbolism you took away from them being trapped in the mall and being trapped in the past or people being stuck in the past yeah, I, I felt like I kind of, you know, there are a few points I agree with you on, um, Tyra, because I think that, you know, they have gone on this European thing and they've, you know, been exposed and, and then they come back. And to me, that whole scene was basically saying, like, 
if you don't expose yourself to other things, you literally will be stuck. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. in, you know, in New Orleans, I know hundreds of people who've never left New Orleans. The only time they left was when we had to evacuate for Katrina. They came mm -hmm. back and that's where their family is. Like there is no go vacation to see my cousin in Virginia or my, you know, my auntie in Detroit because everybody lives here. And if you don't ever expose yourself to anything, you won't ever see the world for what it is. And then when you come back to your surroundings, everybody is like, you see life for what it really is. Like we all just, if we don't make moves, we literally will be working at AT&T when we 60 years old. If we don't make any moves, we always going to shop at the same grocery store and see the same people and do the same things over and over again. And I think Kenya, like going through the, the little closet with them was them trying to escape the normality and like the things that they see every day and trying to do something different and expose themselves to something new. And you have to do that because it's the fear of the unknown. When you leave your comforts, you don't know what you're going to get if you move to L.A. You don't know what's going to happen if you move to New York and you're out on your own and you, you know, follow this man and you don't have a plan. But I think Kenya was saying, like, OK, wherever y'all go, y'all still going to be from Atlanta. Atlanta's still going to be with you. Mm. Like Atlanta's going to follow you wherever you are. And I think she was Atlanta in the in that little scenario. Um, I had never heard of the mall before. The I keep every in my Atlanta mind, every mall is Linux in Atlanta. <laughs> um, but I had never heard of that before. But then when I did my Googles, people were like, Yeah, man, you can go in there and just spend get lost all day. Yeah. Lost. I done lost mm -hmm. my car. I had to get the man on a little cart <clears throat> to drive me around to find my car, like that kind of thing. So I, you know, again, I really enjoy seeing Atlanta be a character in the show and having it be something for people in Atlanta or people that are familiar with Atlanta to know. Like, it's only certain things that you can know if you're really from there and you really run in that area. So, you right. know, I thought it was a really great scene and I thought it was really smart. And I know Donald Glover's brother... Um, Stephen Donald, Glover. There you go. Um, mm -hmm. Hold this episode. Um, and I really enjoy when he's at the helm. I really like his writing style and I, I like that he has ways he provides ways for us to think and interpret right because tyra got something different than i got you know <laughs> and we watch the same thing so i really right. enjoyed that part yeah well said well said and i definitely think to, to everyone's point um as far as them traveling europe and i know season three gets the the uh maybe the worst season of the of the bunch but i think it, it speaks a lot that when you do travel overseas if, if Ern never would have went to to europe as well as van i don't think they would have went through that that dark hole because like l just said you know you got to take those chances and you might come out on the other side different uh which i think this is the case with these characters so i think that that does kind of symbolize them going out of atlanta last season and coming back in this fourth season really kind of uh sets the stage for them re-emerging themselves in Atlanta and things will be different, but things will also be the same. And that's going to be the beauty of this new season is this journey with these characters. But speaking of journey, uh, Tyra, uh, we, we mentioned it earlier and we're going to wrap up to jump into the second episode here in a bit, but your thoughts on our boy Al and this scavenger hunt. I'm just curious, Tyra, and for everyone on the panel, when we get to you, would you, if you would have came across this situation with a scavenger hunt, are you going on that path? Are you listening, going to the locker room with the blue chips, going to the laundry mat, the comic book store? Are you going on that path if you had a, your favorite artist gave you a little scavenger hunt to go on? Absolutely. I thought that was so <laughs> dope. Like, I was with Al, like, where everybody at? Like, this is incredible. Because I knew something was up because he you know, had to go get his zoo pie. And it's just like, yeah, you know, Blue Bud and blah, 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 blah. And the cook is like, I don't even know who that is. Like, <laughs> And yeah. it, I guess it was just, you know, foreshadowing for what he was going to wind up. Like, nobody was there. But I thought that was so dope and so great. And just goes to the testament of the artist that, you know, he affected him. It's like, he, he was so, he was smart enough to, you know, lead this whole thing. And like, I'm not just going to go out and, you know, you're going to come and pay your respect. No, you have to do some intricacy just to even find where I am. Like, I, I thought that was so dope. I would definitely do that. But I was more so uh, surprised at, you know, them come. I was like, so the fur carpet on the wall, I'm like, what, how did we... <laughs> you know, leave you know the mall and go through the dark and now we're here i was like oh god I, I did not expect that but i guess that was just like you know us coming out of the dark like we're all going to leave together you know i just my brain will start hurting if i try to connect all the pieces of atlanta but i did not expect them to come out of the dark and wind up with al that that was crazy to me 
<laughs> I agree. B, your, your, your thoughts on this, the scavenger hunt, man. And, and again, question I asked, would you, whoever your favorite artist is, they came out with an album, uh, whether it was their last album due to passing away, unfortunately, or they're just retiring. Would you go on a scavenger hunt? And also, did you take anything away from uh, the little clues <laughs> and Easter eggs of, of the lyrics? Um, no, I didn't really take anything away from the, 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 the lyrics and the clues of Easter eggs, but yes, just like Tyra, I would definitely, on, definitely, on definitely hunt. like, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm still upset Michael Jackson passed away, you know what I'm saying? I haven't got over that. And so I would definitely go on his scavenger hunt and do the dances and wear the glove and all that. And it was, <laughs> it was just funny to me because like he went, he went to the movies, like, you know, that, that's at least an hour and a half, you know, like that. He didn't drop Dedication. the whole day. I'm like, bro, you supposed to be in Jamaica right now, and so mm-hmm. just to just like who just drops plans like that, you know? Unless it's that that one call or text from whatever, you're like, oh, okay. And so it just shows like it really had an effect on him, right? You know? and, and, and and this is the first episode, so I can I can just I know that this death is going to affect our big time and change his, tra- his trajectory, you know, in a way that we did not anticipate in the past. And so I hope we like how it closes out the, with his character. Uh, but he's on he's on his way to a new journey. And like Tyra said, I'm like, how in the world do we get fur or carpet on the walls? Or what is going on? I did not expect <laughs> that at all. And I was but I, I was happy too with the reveal of them, you know, popping out. I didn't I don't know what it meant. I just was like, hey, we all together now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's all that matters. And you know, Darius is right outside. And um, mm-hmm. so that that was all cool, but it, it was just also sad, man, that he put so much time and effort into making the scavenger hunt, and only you know five people showed up. You know, because if because if you if if you're really down for an artist, you're gonna know their lyrics, you know, in and out. You know, so it was right, right there. But man, I don't know, maybe they had to go to work or something that they, they couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah. um, they might have been stuck in traffic. Yeah, right, right. They might be in right. right. that right. mall. Yeah, right, right, right. But I, I felt I think her name was Keisha, the wife. I I, I kind of feel uh, sorry for Miss. Oh, his wife, yeah, uh, Blue, or Gary's wife, yeah. <clears throat> yeah so, but it, it was cool. Yeah, no, I agree. And totally agree with you, B. I said it in my review uh, that, yeah, and especially in today's society, we all, you know, the shortest tension span, TikTok era, uh, no one really listens to lyrics as much as they do, uh, at least when I was growing up, uh, you know, lyrics and all lyrics, this stuff. Elliot. Yeah, no, it's, it's a beat, and it's a beat, right? And it's the vibe, and it's also, um, you know, uh, the new trend, what's the new dance you could take away from the song? But uh, shout out to Eric, too. I was gonna ask, I forgot to mention that that some people brought up that the Blue Bud, uh, the rapper that was uh, rapping the lyrics was uh, Earl. I, I don't really listen to a lot of Earl Sweat, uh, sweatshirt sure. because I know he, uh, I used to listen to a lot more Tyler the Creator, and that I know he's a part of that crew or whatnot, but I haven't that's why I didn't like register, register with me, like, oh, that sounds like Earl. But uh, your thoughts, Tyra, on this, uh, or else to say, uh, L. Would you go on that scavenger hunt? And was there anything that you took away from, uh, you know, Al and, and his journey? Is it a, a journey that he's going to continue to be on? Kind of, again, just dropping whatever, going on this hunt. Uh, and will he, have, will he have his own hunt maybe by the end of the season, mm-hmm. eventually? Hell yes, I'm going on that scavenger hunt. <laughs> Absolutely. There's no question about it. One of the best summer days of my life was when a friend of mine graduated from high school mm-hmm. 1,200 years ago. And to celebrate, his family put together a scavenger hunt all around the city of New Orleans. And whoever got to the last clue got $150 cash. Wow. And we all had to break up in teams. We got into cars and we all got the clue. The first clue at the same time, we were all in a parking lot facing the same direction. We got the first clue and then we all got to drive off. And I don't know how none of us got arrested or tickets, but and I didn't win either. But- I love scavenger hunts. I love them. I think they're so fun. And I think that's like an old school thing. I don't even think people do scavenger hunts like anymore. Right. Um, or if they do, it's like a monetized like scavenger hunt. You know, you got to pay. It's like a Groupon kind of thing. But, right, right. Um, you know, I think that <clears throat> I think that it really shows, you know, his, you know, commitment to that rapper. Like if it's somebody that touch, like Stevie Wonder could ask me to do anything. I'm just I'm gone. <laughs> Like, it's certain artists that impact you so much that you just would throw it all away at a chance to meet them or experience something that they left specifically for you. Um, And I really enjoy hearing the lyrics and realizing that the lyrics were what Darius was actually doing, like going to D&D to get a zoo pie. Yes. And the, the mm-hmm. dude, he got a mean mug. And then he saw the dude behind the counter. He was looking like, what do you want? You know, um, 
So I really enjoyed that. And I thought it was really, really cool. And I'm glad that Darius did that because I think it's going to, it's going to unlock something for him. What it unlocks, I'm not sure, but I think it will unlock something for him and just him sitting down and being vulnerable, really, because we don't see Darius like that. Darius is like a, man, shut up kind of person. But yeah. he was sitting in the funeral like, man, he really had an impact on me. And, you know, I really enjoyed and I, it really touched me. And he was having like a really heartfelt conversation with this person or, or, you know, around Blue Blood, somebody who's impacted him. And I think he sees a lot of what Blue Blood did in him. Mm -hmm. um, and so hopefully he will take that and do something with it. And I hope that this last season is about us getting to know the characters more. Um, because we learned a lot about Earn in that therapy session, which I know we about to get yeah. to. But I hope yep. that, you know, we get that about all these other characters. Because I promise you, I was thinking, like, have I ever seen Lottie? I don't even know if I've ever seen this little girl. Little <laughs> hints and, yeah, in the background or laying on the bed. In yeah. the bed, face down mm -hmm. one time. Like, we know that she exists. It's a little girl. But <laughs> yeah. if we saw her on the playground, we wouldn't be like, oh, they go Lottie. Lottie right yeah. Now. You know what I mean? So I hope that we get to learn more about them. And I hope this is like the first part of that and that these episodes actually do connect because a lot of Atlanta episodes just be one, two, kind of one off. Yeah. No, yeah. So yep. that's my hope for the for this season. That's a good point. And, and kind of wrapping up uh, with you, B, just uh, final thoughts on this episode before we jump to episode two and, and just kind of thinking, I'm going to, you know, obviously revisit this episode when the season wraps up, but I think this episode does kind of solidify the, all the characters went on their own individual paths in this episode. Darius running away from Karen. I don't know if it was that mean if there's chase, something's going to be chasing him this season uh, or he's going to be chasing something. Earn and Van, we talked about them, their relationship, where it's going to go. Is she going to follow him? Is he going to tell her that she's moving? Uh, and then obviously Al, you know, him losing his favorite rapper and, and what does that mean for his career? So overall thoughts be, uh, and, and if there's anything you're looking forward to, kind of like Elle said, for these uh, characters based off this first episode. Um, I mean, of course, I want to know where they're all going to end up because yeah. they're all crazy. Um, and, and respectfully, though, <laughs> and, and I, because I, I mean, even us, it, we we all kind of messed up in some way, mm -hmm. shape or form. You know what I'm saying? So, no judgment. We, you know, we're all products of our environment. Yeah, uh, we've all experienced, you know, trauma, different mm -hmm. levels. Of course, some more than others. I'm not trying to dilute anyone's experience, and I think that we're getting that here. Like you just said, Al lost his. Um, his his rapper Lottie losing her mind at the end of season three. Earn in episode two, which we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. and there it's always been different, you know, um, in, in a good way. Um, and so I, I like that. Also, I'm I'm just any Star Wars fans out there. I was getting really Anakin versus um, Obi Wan vibes when she the the knife lady approached him in the by the fence. Oh, the high he up, he's like, I have the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to mention that. <laughs> I was like, oh, look, Star Wars. Anyway. <laughs> uh, also, I don't know if the Now You See Me too reference me anything, because when they asked Kenya, like, hey, you know, when, when you first got here, what movie was playing in Regal? And she was like, Now You See Me too." I know that movie came out in 2016. Excuse me. And that was when the show Atlanta started, 2016, so I don't know mm -hmm. if that meant anything, but like you said, Elliot, they all went away and came but ended ended up together. I like that. And hopefully Kenya did survive because <laughs> yeah, we, we heard we heard the wheelchair lady mm -hmm. rolling up on her and she had the air fryer in her hand. And so uh I hope she threw it and hit her in the face with it. <laughs> but uh hopefully hopefully we'll see Kenya some you know alive. I was thinking about that too. Not mm -hmm. not necessarily well, it was because the lady came up, but I was thinking, sis, you by yourself holding the air fryer in an empty parking lot in the middle of well i don't know where well, they yeah, were but exactly. that's just not safe i would have asked to politely sit in the car and wait with y'all for these two minutes while my mom, yeah. i'm going inside yeah. to the wake or something like i'm not just gonna be standing in the parking lot so i don't i don't know what that was about but um that made me nervous and then the lady came roll up i was like you probably not gonna make it sis yeah. i don't hope <laughs> that's luck. i hope you made it but i don't think that she did because can you look a little you know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. 
<laughs> no, I agree. I agree. And, and, and to what you just said, B2, it's also interesting as far as looking forward to, to that little Easter egg as far as 2016. As you just mentioned, that's when the show started. And it goes back to when we talked about with people being stuck. Maybe those people are literally stuck in Atlanta when they were last, like season one or two was in that year, that time frame. So maybe that even ties back to them being literally where they were when they left to go to Europe. And, and just one more quick thing on a personal note, like for me, this uh, this episode resonated with me like but you got to get on it man you know it's like you need to turn it up you know stop you. Around, yeah. man, and, yeah, and man. you need to take advantage of opportunities when they yeah. you know land in your lap you know and stop fumbling so 100 you know, the personal yeah, I feel uh, that. I you. there so i hear you i hear you uh tyra before we get into the second episode any any thoughts final thoughts uh that you took away from this episode and i guess do you think kenya she survived or made it out or hit hit old girl upside the head with the air fryer they can't leave us like that we better see kenya in a later better episode like y'all just left me in the park like i had some lady rolled up on me and have their right. have the revelation like oh i did just do that fryer. i, did, I did, forgot yeah. about it yeah. so yeah. to tie in because i know yeah. old girl did just roll up and stab her but yeah. <laughs> but nothing i just uh think uh within these this particular season we're gonna have them go off and it's gonna mirror this episode everybody's gonna go off and figure out things for themselves and eventually mm. they'll all come back together but nice. i'm good i'm just i'm waiting to get in the episode too all right well let's get into it i want to start with you tyra the second episode as we and by the way um again l uh b and tyra thank you all for being here thank you for all the yeah. people that's watching us live like share comment subscribe and again once this video is completely uploaded all the information from these fine folks will be in the description of this video but tyra we meet this young lady man man lisa lisa man uh and right off the bat you can tell she she got a little she had eye on the emt guy and mm -hmm. listen to r b and and all that stuff uh your thoughts on on her mm -hmm. and was it at any point before we get to the ultimate reveal did you sympathize with lisa at some point in this episode as far as the struggle <laughs> yeah. not getting her book out there and seems to be lonely but your thoughts on this lisa character and, and she uh she had a little jungle fever mm. i mean i'm not gonna say sympathize yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe feel but, a little bad but... uh, i just knew something like something was like not even just r&b like First of all, you're in Atlanta. You're in a certain part of Atlanta. We have, you know, sexual chocolate walking on by. She's like, oh, you know, hey, like, hey, Tyrone. Like, oh, you know, you know, like, you go, go in the house. And then we have her go. Like, it actually made me go and revisit Sierra. It was Goody's album. I was having a good old time. But I think it was just setting up the thing that, you know, hey, Lisa, you're not too far off from where a lot of us are in Atlanta. Mm. So the way that, you know, her behavior, or we find out the type of behavior and the stuff that she's been on, we're like, right. really? Right. Not you, not you, baby hair. Like, no, you didn't. But, <laughs> but yes, I um, I was more so kind of feeling for just her having a dream. Like, you know, this is my everyday whatever. I think she's working. Of course, we found out she's working at the airport. But I really want to be, you know, a children's book writer. And you know, I think my my dream is about to come true. And it got snatched. And that's that's never a good feeling. But hers definitely deserved to be snatched. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, with the pettiness, the pettiness. B, your thoughts on Lisa and introducing to her? Did you immediately have some some iffy feelings about her or, or did you like, oh, this is a, you know what, going back to season three, did you think, because we opened this episode with Lisa, did you think, oh, here we go again, it's going to be another solo non-Atlanta episode? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that's exactly where I thought we was going. Uh, and I, I wasn't like mad or upset or anything, you know, yeah. but I was like, oh, okay, when we start earning a car on the phone with uh, Al, yeah. Uh, but to, 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 I'm gonna answer the question you asked, Tyra. Hell no, I do not feel sorry for her <laughs> at all. Like no. not, not even not even the slightest bit. <laughs> not not one iota that I feel sorry for her at all, man. This was it was petty, man, but it was funny, you know. And of course, I, I sniffed probably I, like you could smell her a mile away. Something wasn't right. She looked horrible. And I'm not talking about <laughs> this in the morning when you go out. Everybody looks bad when they yeah. first wake up and go get the coffee. But when she met her friend later on in the episode, I'm like, you know, I don't want to jump too far ahead. But I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, you definitely needed that makeover. You know, that she got at the end. And I, I, I don't care. The, the, she had Karen, she had the jungle fever, Karen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, oh, I want to smash the black man. But yep. as soon as he don't call me back, you know, he's a predator. <laughs> vibes. Mm. And so she had an egg. It was all just nasty. Come yeah, that egg. Like, yeah, I didn't, yeah. It, the energy was just, just <laughs> off. And so... It, it was no sympathy or whatever. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'll stop right there. But yeah, she got that email, and um, you know, it, I was like, wait a minute, something is brewing here, and I, I didn't know what it was, but <laughs> I was really in, intrigued to find out. <laughs> And to that point, B, and then toss it to you, L. I didn't even realize it to just kind of looking at the the frames here that, and we'll talk about the return of one of my favorite characters. It says Tracy CC'd on the email. So I should have I should have known that there was some foolery going on when we saw Tracy's name on that email. And also, too, if this is a big time publicist, I mean, I would have thought it would have been a little bit more uh, professional. Yeah, right? It's, it's a very generic, <laughs> like there's no uh, footer at the end of it, like with their you know what they've done in the past but hey she's like hey this is my big chance but uh l your thoughts on lisa uh and, and, the, and the question for you did did obviously we know the end result but before getting the reveal of who she really was did you have any sense of sympathy for her character immediately no absolutely not. <laughs> i saw something about the way that she was looking through the blinds it was like mm -hmm. a when her nose was up but she was looking mm -hmm. down i don't ever trust somebody that looks up and down at the same time i never do that i don't know something about that it's creepy to me it's like make up your mind you up or down like you wish you washy i don't like that but i i immediately agree with you b i was like okay well don't you give me another episode with nobody that I know. I don't want to see this this lady this whole episode. I don't care about her. Whoever she is or whatever she has going on, I don't care. But the second thought I had was that she was the daughter of Christine from episode one. I don't know. I thought she was back in her wheelchair and that we were going to get like a thread with her wow. going forward. I just... I don't know. I was like, if this lady come from the back and I hear them wheels spinning, I'm going to be hot. I'm going to be very upset. That's hilarious. <laughs> but, I don't know. Something about her, like I agree, like her energy was off. It was like the lighting in her room was like weird. And, you know, if you live in a, in a neighborhood, you know, people are nosy in a neighborhood. You know, you have your cameras like if my ring doorbell goes off and I see that it's not my door and I see somebody else moving, I'm going to just watch. I'm not a creep, but I'm going to just make sure <laughs> everything is all right, right? So people are nosy, right? That's just like human nature. But something about the way she was doing it, I just knew that she was up to no good. And I just didn't like her, her whole thing. She was eating the egg. It was just off. So I knew something was off with her. And I'm glad that I was right. I'm glad also that the Lord removed that petty spirit off of me. Because I really <laughs> enjoyed seeing the pettiness that came forth in the end. Pettiness. The pettiness, the pettiness. And they had to show her in her dark space, though. Like, just look how grimy and how, dark. Yeah. It, grimy. It, looked, it looked really seedy in her yep. apartment just it to did. show just how <clears throat> lift, uplifted she was, you know, from yep. her life. Yeah. <laughs> And to your point, L, who I actually thought that this woman was, I don't know if you guys remember this episode, uh, Nobody Beats the Beebs. Um, oh that agent that Earn was working with that she said she was going to get his paper. Obviously, she thought that Earn was someone completely different. Uh, I thought because they kind of resemble each other in a certain extent. I know this actress mm -hmm. can't think of her name right now, but I thought it was that that woman uh, from season season one. That was uh, Are you trying to say all white ladies look the same. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting just... at. L. That's exactly what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> but uh and who knows i mean we're back in atlanta maybe this woman has maybe she'll turn back up uh and, and try to get her uh due back on on urn because we got to remember there is that white urn ghost is still chasing urn so we, we got to tie that back somehow see if there's any connections there but we'll, we'll catch up with lisa a little bit later i don't know if it was just me but i got a kick out of the the conversation between urn and uh al with the whole favorite movie being Scarface and him saying, oh, it's probably Mulan. Man, I don't watch it. Oh, damn. It was <laughs> Mulan. <laughs> and AOL. That was hilarious. But now to the serious topic at hand, uh, Tyra. The urn um, finally getting the reveal of what happened to Princeton. I never forgot Princeton. I always was like, what did, what happened? Because he seemed to be on this path of being the, whatever he wanted, a doctor, lawyer, whatever, and it just didn't work out. But we finally find out what happens. But even before we get to day two of therapy, what did you think of the the conversations uh uh you know there was a mention of uh abuse from one of his family members uh, i i thought that was the highlight of the episode obviously the pettiness was, was amazing but as far yes. as like uh <laughs> acting goes and, and relatability what did you think of these therapy moments oh man i felt seen <laughs> i was about to cry i was like oh earn I didn't um, forget about Princeton, but it just seems so, so long ago that to bring it, you know, up here now, I like, I sat straight up. I was like, oh, like, we really don't know what happened. But 
even just you know the stigma of going to therapy as we so like oh this this nigga making so much money he he want to go give his money away like yeah mm -hmm. because going to get help and get therapy is considered you know something wrong and giving your money away but I was in the beginning I was so proud of Earn I was like oh he's doing the work he is purging like this is so great I, I love even the topic of uh, just not even that but when he talked about health and it's just like I had to go get second third and fourth opinions just mm -hmm. to you know for somebody to really inquire to see what's wrong with me or him being you know wired to the phone and it's yep. just like well yeah you got to get off the phone but I can't pay for therapy unless you know I'm doing business that's right. probably contributing to to my like oh man I want to go to therapy like <laughs> it, it, it was just so awesome but the more like turning point for me in the episode like after we figure out what happened and I was like, wow, Sasha, okay. Um, <laughs> it was a lot, like, the emotion. Like, I, I think we always felt that um, he was a little dark and he could be a little distant sometimes. Like, something, mm -hmm. something's a little <clears throat> off. But, like, he's really driven. But something's always been a little off about Earn. So to figure out that it was this and it was just so heavy and he's been carrying this around this entire time and I'm assuming, like, n nobody really really knew about it or what's going on. And yeah. I was just assuming this entire time just because of the state that we met him in, you know, the whole I'm broke and da 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 This is why he was, you know, being driven to work so hard. But it's all been based in trauma spewing from being mistreated. Like I was, you know, brilliant and intelligent enough to even get into Princeton and get the master key and, you know, be the AR and all these other good things. But the one time I go to just get a suit, I'm, you know, uh, ridiculed and I'm, you know, yep. made to, you know, look <clears throat> like, you know, big black scary man on campus. Right. And he just felt in the, like the, when his voice broke and said, you know, because, because she was my friend, like I didn't, I didn't expect this. Like I, I was just out of there and the therapist goes like, oh, you know, this is in connection to the trauma that happened to you, you know, from a family member. Yeah. I, I was done. That's huge. <laughs> I was done. Like I literally paused it and I had to walk away because I'm like, oh, this, this is too much. I didn't, I didn't expect this or even just to get that acting and that emotion out yeah. of her. And like, you, that was some top tier acting, right? right there because yep. it just felt it felt so real yeah. but when we get to see like I was I was so proud of him and like this is this is what he needed to do but when we have that shift happen to where he's having the conversation about the airport and try to try to board, board the plane and we have that connect back to Lisa I was mm -hmm. like oh this is not exactly what we think it is he is absolutely trumping you know being petty and we hear him discuss you know him carrying that spike like I'm not so much in a position to heal right away. I'm holding on to spite and trauma and that's what's you know, driving me thus far. But I would love when we had him, um, just the simple stuff of him. I think um, even like in parodies, they have it like be like, oh, this is real, real therapy once you uh lay down on the couch like, yeah <laughs> and yeah. Earn is like you know like i want to lay down but you know i i, I don't need therapy like that i'm gonna lay on the floor mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna lay, i still want to lay down but i'm gonna lay on the floor but when right. we have the therapist go the extra mile to go you know what hey even if you don't want to lay on the couch you want to lay on this floor i feel like you're going to be here a while and we have work to do so i'm gonna get you mm -hmm. a pillow just so you're comfortable and lay on the floor yep. and yep. Earn just like completely like ish on therapy like nah this is what i'm prioritizing like my mental health my state yep. i don't care about that right now i'm on being petty and i was like oh my god like petty train I, I feel so seen <laughs> like you're choosing you know to be spiteful and be petty and yep. not trump trumping you know your self-care like that that was crazy to me like just to see that switch and earn but just to realize that it's not much of a switch this is earned like just mm -hmm. to just to know that this is who he is and all that hard work and dedication and building everything up just to get to the point to be able to do stuff like this it, it, it's crazy but it, it was funny but it was crazy at the same time well said well said b the therapy b what, uh, what your thoughts uh, you know from child abuse potentially uh so where all his uh uh fuel stems from uh i think it's safe to assume that sasha had a crush on her that's why she and she was kind of jealous of whatever this fun party she went he went to and I don't know, maybe we'll get her later this season but your thoughts man on these therapy sessions yeah, man. Uh, not just about the therapy session, but the whole episode. The, what, one thing I like more than the episode itself was the description of it. Like if you go to IMDb, the sec two, last two sentences, y'all really need therapy. I don't because I already know what's wrong with me. I've heard so many black people say that all of my life, you know, thinking, you know, I don't need therapy. It's that white people shit. Even I've said that myself. 
And we, uh, <laughs> the thing about it is we've been through, we've gone through the most and we need it more than anybody, more than white people, brown people, Asian people, you know? And so uh, I, I am also like Tyra, I was so proud of Earn, you know, going to therapy. You know, that's how we saw him. He's in the car. He's being honest with Al and Al's making fun of him. And uh, I know that that happens too, but this episode just really pulled a Jedi mind trick on us, you know, because <laughs> going back to where at the end of season one, we find out this dude is sleeping in a storage closet, a storage facility, and then he's making moves overseas in season three. But then as soon as we see him in season one, he's back with with Van, Van. They, their relationship seems healthy. He has a good job. And now he's in therapy. I'm like, this is perfect. This is perfect. We're going to get a, a nice season four conclusion with Earn on top. He got, he got the job. He wants the status, the money, the resources, the family, all that. And then this dude, we find out at the end that he is paid a level 9,000 that like he is really messed up. And I was just thinking to myself, man, like on the outside, on the surface, it can look like somebody has all of their stuff together and we admire them and put them up on the pedestal. Like, oh, I want to be like this person or, you know, they motivate me and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But behind the door, they're, you know, I mean, we've all been paid before, but I don't think to this level. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that was just like really, 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 really wild to me. Um, and so, yeah, I, I loved it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, like Tyra said as well, the acting was fantastic. Not just from Earn, but the therapist as well. I forgot that, but I don't. I, 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 is he from some other popular movie or TV show? I try to look. He him looks up familiar. Like, me. Some people have said uh, in my comments that he they they think that he's the guy that like next on it, like he voices the the next uh, episodes or whatever. I don't yeah. know if that's to be the okay. case, but yeah, he he does look familiar. Hundred yeah, percent. He he did he did fantastic, and like I again. Agree. I was just so proud of Aaron because, like, I think Tyra said, he he went to the doctor. He had the EKG machine up to him. And, see, and you, know, you know, you know, black people, especially black men, don't like to go to the hospital. You yeah. know, they don't like to go to the doctor. You know, like, this, I, I'll be all right. I'm just going to drink some water, you know, taking me some goji berries <laughs> or something. You know what I'm saying? Some sea moss, some sea moss and some, some alkaline water. And, you know what I'm saying? But he, he doing, he yeah. doing, he, it seemed like he doing everything right to be the best version of himself. You know what I'm saying? But there's still just some disconnect, you know, and uh, I, I felt sorry for him, man. He was truly hurt. And uh, I was when I was watching, I was saying to myself, man, I'm finna call. I'm finna go to BetterHelp.com. <laughs> right. As soon as the episode yeah. is over, you know, uh -oh. I didn't. I didn't. I got tired of something else and I, I'm, I'm messing up. I need to go ahead and give me a therapist, too. But uh, uh -huh. it, it was it was amazing, man. And like this, this is uh, this episode was perfect, you know, uh, and for so many reasons, you know, just. And just shows how important therapy is, and what, yeah. being serious and joking uh, about it at the same time is just uh, like joking. Very... Like the way that they were able to throw them shots when he was like, "Yeah, they want me to come." Now that I'm, you know, I'm somebody, they want me to come speak at Princeton now. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't want no honorary degree. Like I can't open a practice with that. That means nothing. I was like, "Oh, right. somebody kill a scene," because they stay handing out them honorary degrees. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and yep. he he was like, "I told him to kiss my ass," and he's like, "They did. They gave me the offer, not my ass." And I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, I I just got like the the dialogue there and how they throw that in there. So yeah, this this was uh. This this was ace. This was amazing. I agree. Yeah. And before we get Elle's thoughts on a quick shout out again to, to GMAC showing some love with the super chat. I felt that Earn because uh, um, his exact situation happened to a former college roommate. Okay. Carolyn Bryant 2.0. Oh. Well, Carolyn Bryant, I hope uh, Earn maybe uh, has a, a plan for you. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but shout out to you again, GMAC, and appreciate you sharing that story and the super chat there. But L, tossing it to you. Um, your thoughts, your takeaways. Um, Earn, is he, some people said that he might be the villain this season. Uh, do you think he'll return to therapy? Did he just take, because it's, it's very interesting as he's crying in this scene here, when he offers the, the tissues, he, he, you know, he shoots it away, which almost kind of means that he's, he, it, it got too real for him. You know, I think he wants to work on himself, but he didn't really want to go to the depths of what stems from everything. So it's kind of was a, a shock to him. But your thoughts on this therapy session and uh, will we get more of these therapy sessions in the future for all these characters? Like I said earlier. <laughs> so um, I don't have clients anymore, but this therapy scene was extremely well executed. It's extremely accurate. And I'm one glad that the therapist is a black male. Mm -hmm. 
yep. because it is yeah, easier yeah. to find a full leaf clover on top of a mountain in the Appalachians than to find <laughs> a black male therapist. It's like four. Wow. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, you know, I'm not even joking. It's yeah. very few black male therapists. Um, mm. And I feel like the way that he was um, responding in therapy, like you said, he is doing all the right things. He is doing the work. But therapy is very much an ebb and flow, like a give and take. There are very few people that stay in therapy um for years and years at a time one because it's a time commitment right you have to you have to do these things and a lot of therapists don't see clients after five o'clock when you get off work so you go on a therapy on your lunch break you go on a therapy early in the morning now we have teletherapy which helps but you know but i think that earn um you know he mentioned that he was having pains in his chest and and that his arm was numb and mm. that, you know, he didn't have any physical ailment that would cause him to have those kinds of symptoms, which is why they sent him to therapy, because therapy, the need for therapy shows up literally in your body. Mm. The stress and anxiety that people feel shows up in tense necks and shoulders, back pains, headaches, overeating, yeah, undereating. Let me, let me go ahead and get my therapy session. Like uh, that. Up it shows up. So, so sure. you know. Yeah. <clears throat> The way that they had that whole scene set up was perfect. I really, really appreciated that as somebody who works in that space. But as it relates to Earn, again, it was very accurate because, you know, the way that he pushed that tissue away. Mm -hmm. People, is, you know, I don't want to lump everybody in, but men are not taught to emote yep. and they're not taught to think that it's OK to cry. So it could be very uncomfortable to even show those kinds of emotions in front of another man, even though that man is there to help you. So him pushing the tissue away is like, nope, I don't need it because it's over with. I'm not even crying no more. I done did this, it's over with. You saw it, I saw it, we're not going to talk about it, let's move on. Like if I take the tissue, that's something that I don't really want to do. That's me committing to staying in this space and I don't want to do that. So I think that earn feeling those feelings and going through with therapy, but ultimately stopping it is very accurate because as soon as you, because you remember he had like a little a little um like a little revelation he was like oh well you know i think that that's probably me responding to something he said something that his therapist taught him and he was like shit i got it now I I got, mean, right i got that tool <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's very much what happens but we see that he still could use that therapy because he was on petty nine thousand. <laughs> if you all if you feel the need to do that yeah then still have a need for therapy because all petty yep. is is wanting to control something that you can't control. Somebody did something to you and you can't punch them in their face like you want to. So instead of punching you in your eyeball, I'm a, you know, put some sugar in your tank. Or, you know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> I can control that part. So I thought right. that was a beautiful scene and I thought that one, the therapist's office was gorgeous. I don't know. I, you know, he must be paying $12,000 an hour because it was... <laughs> Um, and I, you know, and yeah, it was a, yeah, yeah. The yeah. fact that you know it's just it was two two black men in a space being yeah. vulnerable together, yeah. and one helping the other, and you really don't see that in a lot of spaces, especially not in this show. So you know, I love it, and I would want to encourage everybody to go get a therapist if you think you don't need one. Yes, you <clears> do. <throat> lie, you need one. You, <clears throat> if you're in a really great space, great. Let's make sure you can stay there. If you're in a not so great place. Let's go ahead and get you up out of there. If you want to call BetterHelp, call BetterHelp. Go on psychologytoday.com. You can find people who are black, white, Asian, people who focus on LGBTQ issues, people who focus on um, young children, older children, trauma of all sorts, psychologytoday.com. You can put in your zip code and then you can do teletherapy in person, a hybrid. They have people that have um animals in their practice that you can go cuddle a puppy while you get therapy so go get a therapist Let's today go. don't wait today's video is sponsored by uh 1-800 uh, nah, yes. shout out to l um i'm sorry I'm gonna, I, was, I felt like i was at work just now we I'm needed sorry. That. I, got I, got, I got a i got a pull it up right now <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm about to go ahead and log in myself, B. Um, yes, this therapist has a therapist off top, so mm. everybody could definitely benefit one. Well said, well said. Well, wow, that that was um, yeah, and and this and this is why again we we laugh, we have a good time. You know, what does this mean? What does that mean? What is what's gonna happen at the end? But it's it's moments like this that this show 
hits on another, another level for me and, and as you can tell for L and, and for B and for Tyra and everyone watching live. And this is why I love this show because it, you know, obviously it brings these conversations together, but also just, it just, it, it makes you like, I think Brandon said it earlier, it makes you reflect on your real life and it makes you want to change for the better and, and all that stuff. So well said, well said, uh, checking back in with Miss Lisa, just to get to, to the pettiness 9,000, just to kind of get to that conversation here, starting with you, B. Once she was at the uh, first off, let me do I have the picture here? <laughs> I, I couldn't help myself but to laugh with the with the curls on the uh, you know, when when they took it to the, to the <laughs> oh, that made me hot. <laughs> they put well, actually, before I go there, B, uh, I, I can't skip over the return Tracy. of Tracy. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, how I, can I, I do like... that? How can I do that? We, I don't, I'm if gonna put you the picture see here. Tracy run away, it's a setup. <laughs> And my man in the middle of the scheme and he doing his own thing, whatever he was on the phone talking about. Uh, yeah. But Brandon, I'm going to get the picture here in a second. Your thoughts on Tracy. Do you want to see more from him? Should he be watching his back? Because Earn is coming back after Brother, that ass whooping he gave him in season two. I have a love and hate relationship with Tracy. Like I love him, but I hate him, but I hate him, but I love him. You know, uh, I, I just going back to when he fought Earn in the on the side of the road like, a few seasons ago. He hey, like, listen, to be like, fair, he warned Earn. He warned him. He warned him, bro. I that is such a, yeah, that is such a humbling experience coming from Tracy too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, uh, first of all, uh, I was like, yeah, we got to talk about Tracy. But at first, yeah. I was like, I thought the EMT guy was Tracy for a second. He was in after, after, yeah, after the second it. time I watched it. Yeah, 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 just for a quick moment, just, yeah. just for a quick moment. Uh, but it was funny though, he was like super professional, like not greeting the person. I, it, it hey. was some jerseys, a shirt hey. that cost like $400, you know what I'm saying? Like $400, it was, <laughs> it, it was wild. Uh, but yeah, man, you knew something was awry yeah, just from, as soon as he popped up. But I mean, I know they're actors, but they put they played that whole scene very, very well, so expeditiously, and just got her out of there. I mean, like, come on, uh, what was it, Lisa? You got to be smarter mm -hmm. than that, man. You got to be asking some questions. You know what I'm saying? You're on this cloud nine. I know you want it, but come on now, we gotta you, we gotta think here. You know, we all get those bogus, excuse me, emails that you know it may seem flashy on the subject line, but then you're like, wait a minute, this this is a bunch of crap. So. Um, I was gonna say poor Lisa. Never mind. I will take that back. But <laughs> yeah, man, Tracy, your boy. He he's funny. He he is funny, so man. He, is uh, funny. he he brought the right amount of comedy at the right time. You know, in this episode, and I thought it was perfect. Look, G. I, I, the reason I didn't recognize him because of what the waves. The waves. Where are the waves, yeah. Tyra. Okay. Where are the waves? But <laughs> your thoughts yeah. on the return of a, apparently, you know, a fan favorite, if you ask me. Uh, and do you want more of Tracy? Do you think we'll see him again in this season? I could always use more Tracy. Like Tracy will stick with me for life for walking out of the store with them shoes. Like <laughs> I love they can't what stop Tracy, you. They can't stop you. <laughs> I love what Tracy represents because we all know a Tracy. Like oh, as yeah. soon oh, as yeah. I saw Tracy, I was like, okay, <laughs> something is going on. Because for, for for like all of two seconds, I was like, Tracy got a job. Tracy trying to do a job. Yeah, but then once we like, he's like, uh, like, uh. And when he rushes into the office, like it's such and such a clock. I was like, okay, we're rushing out. This is not your space. This is a whole false setup. Like, hey, the real people who own this space are about to come back from lunch. <laughs> tell her what she needs to tell her and Gus get up out of here. And it just shows like the disappointment that she must have felt because the eagerness that she was to just accept, like, oh, my dream is about to come true. I, I don't care. Like, yeah, show up in your Sunday's best stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go before the real person gets back here. But I, I thought the setup was great. And after, you know, all that we had went through with Earn, it was nice to, you know, get a get a little breather because it, it, it got yep. really heavy for a minute but yep. I, I love Tracy I absolutely love Tracy and it just it just shows like the level of petty that he was on that he would like if you want to be petty that's who you go dig up Get go Tracy. dig up Tracy <laughs> L your thoughts on the return of Tracy uh would you want to see more from the character and should earn uh or should I say Tracy watches back because earn he's on his list too <laughs> man I love Tracy I want to see Tracy all way more than what I have and I didn't recognize him at first because I'm thinking it was a legitimate place that she was going I mean it didn't you know what I mean like when I first watched it <clears throat> got the email and yes the email looked a little a little, a little spammy janky. and yeah, I was yeah. like uh, you know whatever I don't you know and she went there and I'm thinking well you know because we we've, we've experienced people that are rude as hell like have zero customer service and have been just <laughs> like that mm -hmm. in all kinds of environments right but something about 
the way he told her to sit down, like, go over there and sit down. Like, just like the way he told her to dance. I was like, wait a minute. Hold up. And then she went into the room and he was like, hey. 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 He was like, <laughs> but the way he said, hey, I was like, damn it, oh, that's man. Tracy. Look at Tracy. I didn't recognize him. So yeah. when I realized who it was, I was like, yo, this is a, okay. This is a scam. I get it now. <laughs> Something is off. Ain't nothing legit about what's going on. And then when she met the guy, he was like, hey, I'm your agent now. Here's my card. Call the number. Do the thing. Who? You don't know her name. You don't know the book. You don't know what's going on. And she just was so... I, I don't know. I just feel like good. I'm glad she was stupid. Because most people... <laughs> been, like, you know what I mean? Most people would have been saying, like, this is not... This doesn't, something doesn't feel right. They would have felt off about it because where's why would you you know i don't know but that was a really great scene and i really enjoyed i like when they throw people in there and meet it i forgot and i had forgot about tracy so it was good to see him listen l this is the moment that i would have walked away look at this damn sign <laughs> this is a, a a white sheet of paper and 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 wrap on a and like this is supposed to be a professional place Right. This is the most jankiest <laughs> made two Tracy probably made this two minutes before she walked to the building. <laughs> oh man, she was she was uh she was fooled. She believed it. She believed it. And something um, about the yeah. way that she something about those baby hairs on the side of oh, her head goodness. just sent me over. Oh yeah. Oh, I yeah. was so aggravated about it. You gotta get some thinking. Baby. Why would you even allow somebody to do that I don't know. It just she just it was making me nervous. I can't even lie to you. Something about the little and it wasn't like just the wavy ones. It was a circle <laughs> one. It was like kind of. I was like, oh man, this is too much. That's what makes it funnier because they knew that that was a bad look for her. <laughs> she still went around. She still went along with it. Uh, but this just kind of ties into and wrap it up the episode here. Um, I never realized it again. So I rewatched the episode. That book, the story that she was writing, was about a white horse being accepted by, I think it was a black horse, a brown, you know, other <laughs> colored horses. So it kind of makes even more sense that she was just accepting everything. She was just like, I'll do the baby hairs, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, it kind of plays into it. So her character just wants to be accepted. But then she has her ways about her. As we learn, uh, Tyra. We get the story of a long story short with Ern going to the airport. She, you know, before we learned it was Lisa, the person didn't take his ID and ruined his family vacation. This was going to be the moment he was going to tell Van about moving to L.A., but it was all ruined due to this character. When was it for you, Tyra, that you kind of realized, oh, that's that's the same woman at the airport? What was the moment that you realized these were the same characters? When she sat down to read that book. <laughs> When she sat down to read that book and not even just the book, but the way like it was like a light switch went on for Ern in therapy. Like, I need to get my get back. This is the same thing I experienced at Princeton. And just the yep. journey, the little small journey that we went on with her, you know, it was dark, seedy and gloomy. We're peeking through the blinds like we're living in the same neighborhood, pretty much living from the same paycheck, the paycheck you held a friend like, girl, really? I can't lend you no more money like mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know are listening to black music you're lusting after black men but in the same token you took your position to you know be all, all these microaggressions from what it sounded like mm -hmm. all this extraness mm -hmm. you know to you know shoo us from the flight and now i'm gonna do the same thing to you like we're, we're kind of on the even with the uh I don't, I don't know was it the the staff who worked at the well not staff because these are all hired actors all hired but actors yeah, yeah. like you know <laughs> She tried to, you know, come in there with it a little bit. Like, don't be try, try to uh, present herself as more than what she is. Like, I'm coming in here with my dog. Like, yeah, this is my suit. Like, no, it ain't, girl. Take that dog and tie it up outside. And she's like, but yeah, it's, it's like, no, I know who you are and I know what this is. In fact, I know we went to the same hairdresser, baby hair. Like, we're <laughs> we're experiencing the same things, but you're trying to come in here and present yourself as better when you're in mm. actuality. You're, you know, you're struggling. You're here for a moment, a dream, so desperate that you believe somebody like Tracy. Like, <laughs> you're, you know, we're, we're, we're on the same Ooh. level, but you took this moment in your job, in your position to treat her in a certain way. And, you know, he took it very personal and decided to throw all of that back his way and not only do that but use his money to do it and it was so elaborate i'm like all of this was all you did all of this earn like it, it 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 was funny but it just shows just how crazy and off 
earn is to go this far. And he was so proud of it. It wasn't even like he had a second thought, you know, as it was playing on the screen. Like, not only did you do it, but you recorded it and played it back in the bar for everybody to see. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just like, you know, yeah. And you even have, like, when Darius is the voice of reason, like, what well, I don't right. know. Right. What to even think about this? Like, I, I don't even know what to say. And he's just like, yeah, I did it. And I might do it to somebody else. Like, this is the type of stuff that I'm on. I thought it was funny and amazing that he just snatched a little homeliest little horse from her. And it, it was funny. It was funny, but it just goes to show, like, don't try to present yourself as one thing and then come in here and act like you're better than somebody mm -hmm. when we're all having the same shared experiences as not, you know, black people. Like, you're struggling, girl. You're, you're struggling, baby hair. The right. baby hair is struggling. Like, so, <laughs> don't. Yes, so. don't don't come in here with that but it, it just shows like i bet she won't try to that mess skin ever again in her life <laughs> oh boy oh boy b your thoughts on this uh pettiness uh and i guess i'm just now thinking about it um Earn used to work at an airport right yes and there's probably only one major airport in atlanta i wonder if he knew lisa from back in the day because he knew her full name like of course when you get into a uh argument with someone you might remember their name on a name tab but he knew her full name knew where she you know all of that stuff so i wonder if it ties back to even season one when he worked at the airport but your thoughts uh brandon on this this petty this level and i, and I gotta ask and we'll go round table b if you had the time and if you had the money you don't have to name any names but would you, is it someone worked with or went to school with or someone you knew in your past that you would go, you go to these lengths to get them back? 100%. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I, Save I'm not, here. Save I'm, here. I'm, I'm not. Um, I, I'm a nice guy and yeah. I, don't, I don't try to do nobody wrong. I try to be upfront and transparent. Um, and, you know, there's been people that have screwed me and, you know, I've let it go. But no, there's some people to where, hey, if the yeah. opportunity fell in my lap, Oh, yes. I, I oh, yeah. would have HD IMAX cameras recording. <laughs> 4K. Yes, yes 4K, 8K. And, uh, <laughs> you know, all the monitors, everything. Um, also, man, kind of just like what Tyra said, this woman is nuts. For you to walk up in that library with your nose tooted up in the air like you, the Queen Elizabeth or something like that, which anyway... It was amazing to me. Like, I was seeing how the episode, I mean, woman, you look like you wash your hair in a toilet, yeah. but you walking in here with this dog, you know, just with, with this privilege of like, it's, 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 it's insane. It is, it is crazy. And I got to be honest, guys, my whole, my whole position on this episode has changed like at least four minutes ago. I'm embarrassed to say this, but doing this live is when I'm real, just not realizing that Lisa was the same woman at the airport. So all of my petty level nine thousand, oh. no, <laughs> no, I, I am I am team Iron over here. Fuck her, she deserved it. You know what I'm saying? No, uh, -uh. you ruined my, my 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 vacation, and I was yep. embarrassed. I was like, I was like, when? Okay, he said that this happened two months ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so that was that had to be after season three. I, we did we not see it? And I don't know. I guess. I don't know what happened. It just the the dots just not. Excuse me. I miss you, B. I miss you. Yeah, <laughs> dots just did not connect, and I'm just like, oh no, she 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 just yeah. She, I I was early. I was like, pay the level nine thousand. Are you doing too much? But no, you want to because they said she was racist because she was doing mm -hmm. it to all the black people, all, all the black people, people of color. Yeah. So you know how I feel about white supremacists. Like no, we no no we no no. So she <laughs> she deserved it. I'm 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 team Earn over here. I'm glad that he recorded it. You know, anytime he's upset, <laughs> at least he can press play and get a laugh. Right. You know, so, yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here and, for it. And to even stem to, and again, uh, not condoning it, but also condoning it, because even just thinking about the story he told, he said that she laughed at him after it was like, he like calmed down. I was like, listen, man, I got my family here. We're trying to go on this vacation. She laughed in his face, B. So that's yeah, another no. level of just like, oh, I'm going to even get you dig even deeper because your family's involved. So I'm going to embarrass you even more, which makes the payoff, the payback even better. Uh, but, but, just yeah. real quick. The only thing that would make Ern's decision bad now, in my opinion, with this new information, I just realized is if he broke the bank to do what he did. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think, don't think he, he did. Have, he was just giving out money. Like it was, yeah, I, I don't think he should have like went to the savings <laughs> account or missed his rent or mortgage payment or nothing like that. That's, that's ridiculous. But right. if he, if it, I'm just saying in the, I know this is how, in the hypothetical situation, if he had money to blow, bro, yeah. in her life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah.
And it looks like her life is definitely in those kids. I see someone mentioned in the, in the chat. Uh, those kids were hilarious too. Just kind of yeah. clown her and <laughs> they're, 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 they're not. They're running out of the barn. <laughs> yeah, now it was. It was, and those were all again all uh, hoax. Like, all just keep good. going. Uh, I'm not hopeless. <laughs> like she, she was just so broken. The voice started to crack. The baby hair started to sweat out. It was a problem. Oh my god. Oh man, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. I wonder if she'll uh if she'll be back anytime. Probably not, because like you said, we all these episodes oh, kind of don't really Earn, always tie together. Earn is coming. That whole moment had me thinking about when he went and that whole they thought that hundred dollar bill was counterfeit. Like he going back, he coming to get everybody. Mm. Everybody watching back. Everybody. Earn is on the loose and he has money. <laughs> you got money. Should have never got easy because money. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, this is uh, this is great. This is great. So, I guess any final thoughts? I'm gonna talk to you, L, on this second episode, Darius. Again, when you know you're you're at a level when we already talked about episode one, nothing phases Darius. He's just like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> when Darius even comments like that's some pettiness or some terrorism, you know that speaks to, <laughs> to the levels of pettiness there. But your thoughts, are, uh, L, on uh, this second episode, and, and and what did you take away from it going into uh, the rest of the season? Um. Well. I thought the episode was great. Um, I always enjoy seeing Petty produced on the television because, you know, <laughs> you get to just, you know, kind of live in that. You know, when you are older <laughs> and you have to be mature and you got stuff that you could lose by being Petty, you know, you have to let your petty pettiness go. Um, but see, when I was in my early 20s, you wasn't going to see me. They crowned me the queen of Petty. And I was relishing in my title, okay? And, you know, it just, it felt good to see that somebody else was kind of feeling that way. Um, and I feel like, you know, and, you know, I'm not at work. So just keep that in mind when I say what I'm about to say. I'm cool with pettiness. I'm cool with that. Like, I, I, I get it. Because, again, you being petty is just trying to control something that's out of your control. Like, she was able to affect what happened to Earn. He mm -hmm. was not able to get on that flight. She used her little privileges and yep. power and position to prevent him from doing something. What is he going to do? Because he was like, I can't do anything because then I'm going to be on a no fly list. Then that's going <laughs> right. to be flight. He was right. completely out of control and he didn't like that somebody else's behavior impacted his opportunities, his access, something that he really wanted to do. Because he really wanted to go to Princeton and be like, see, I didn't even need y'all in the first place. Right. Um, but he wasn't able to do that. And so him being out of control, he said, okay, baby, well, listen, you kept me off that plane. All right, cool. I'm just going to ruin your life. Even <laughs> <Steve."> <laughs> We good. Like we good to go. And I appreciated that. I, you know, on Monday when I put my other hat back on, I'm going to tell him that was inappropriate, but see on right. Sunday, I'm going to say <laughs> that it was completely okay with me. I, yep. I, I'm not mad at that. I really enjoyed that. And I really like to, the kids were lighting her up, but I don't know for some reason <laughs> the dog running away at the end just completely sent me over the edge because she was in her car crying and then her little dog ran Stop. away yep. and she couldn't mm -hmm. get it. And I was like, good. Since you're in an old busted car, no money, <laughs> quick drive. Now you don't have a friend because your friend, you don't, you know, you don't friend that lent your money or whatever. You don't mm -hmm. have a job. Now you don't have a dog. So go ahead and just <laughs> to do whatever you want to do. I thought mm -hmm. it was great. Two thumbs up for Earn. The he icing on the cake would have been Iron showing up in a parking lot pointing and laughing at her or something. Yeah, that would have been good too. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I'm glad yeah. too that they were able to, to fit so much into like a 30 minute episode. That's what's so yeah, crazy really to me, y'all. Yeah, it's crazy because you really could have done only therapy or yeah. you really could have done only the petty part. So, you know, they were able to, and I didn't feel like either part was lacking either. Like, I feel like we got a full fleshed out piece of therapy and a full fleshed mm -hmm. out piece of petty. And that was great because it's, you know, and we still got commercial breaks in that thing. So it was exactly. great. Marvel, Disney, take notes. That's how you do television. <laughs> you can do a lot with 30 minutes. Yeah. You can do a lot in 30 minutes. Uh, Tyra, your thoughts, final thoughts on this second episode and, uh, do you think we'll get uh, uh, Lisa back at all? And any any other thoughts on this episode? I think Lisa is done. Lisa, Lisa, yeah, she's, I'm yeah, she learned her Lisa, Lisa is done. I am on the completely opposite end of the spectrum as far as petty. Like I'm more, you know, the universe is going to deal with you. I'm going to, you know, leave it alone. 
<laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, you know, you know, you can't even mess with me. I'm gonna go to temple and I'm gonna pray about it and come back and regroup. But <laughs> I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to heal and move past it. I don't want to give you any more of my energy enough to be this petty with you. <laughs> not that I did not enjoy the pettiness in this episode. Like yeah. it made me like, you know, well, like no, no, it's not worth it. Like we, we're not being petty. We, we're not gonna do it. And I think that was the whole purpose. Like we loved him being petty, but mm -hmm. it just goes to show like we're petty, but we still didn't deal with any trauma. We're still damaged. We still yeah. need that therapy because we are being this petty but i loved it um <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna see lisa anymore i think it's pretty yeah. much done but i really want to know you know exactly what this means for earn because it was just like forget therapy i got what i needed from it now i'm trumping this so it's like what are you going to be on what type of energy are you going to have moving forward because we've never seen him go this far <laughs> and yeah. do something like this and at this point extreme, i'm like yeah. nobody's safe like <laughs> Are you coming back for everybody? Like <laughs> it's crazy, but yeah, don't, don't be petty, but but you know, don't be petty. Don't don't revel in the petty this much to go break the bank. <laughs> Since I'll be your petty translator. I'll volunteer as <laughs> tribute and I'll do I'll do the petty for you if you like. You just let me know what happened and I'll come up with a solution, give you three <laughs> options. And then you pick which option, and then I'll just go ahead and do the rest. And That's then I'll perfect. Let you know how I went. I, I'm definitely perfect for that. There you go. B, your thoughts on uh, this episode, man, and any thoughts for uh, what this could mean for the future of, of Earn, and particularly, is it more pettiness to come? Yeah, man. Hopefully, uh, while it was all fun, hopefully he does go back to the therapist and and get things worked out. Uh, yeah. Not only will it just be entertaining, but I think it'll just you know show have a good message out there for for everybody all viewers yeah. especially uh <laughs> black people uh on, on top of the more pettiness though uh either Ern showing up laughing and or the dog i ran over or something uh <laughs> or Ern has it. the dog and that's his dog <laughs> right the dog was in on it. i like you errol i like you 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 you, are, are you, you know um but like tyro though uh my mom is like you or whatever she's like she'll let the universe handle it you know what mm -hmm. goes around comes around she she's trying to teach me all my life brandon if somebody does you wrong, you may not see it, but I promise you it's going to come back around and bite them in the, you know. And so mm -hmm. that has actually calmed me down for trying to, you know, be petty and get revenge and stuff like that. But yeah, on more, on, <clears throat> more on a serious note, though, it was interesting that even though Aaron won and got everything he wanted, he was celebrating alone. Yep. You know? yep. He, didn't get, he, didn't, he didn't get no money. He didn't go he didn't no resources. He didn't get any yep. recognition. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people that he was supposed to celebrate with Darius and, and Al, like y'all said, they was looking at him like he was crazy. So, yeah. uh, and it, he realized it at the end, like, damn, I, I still need therapy because not only was Lisa arrogant, so was he. And right. so um, I just yeah. kind of thought that I like how they kind of, you know, grounded it there in reality. Right. It's like, you know, what, what do you, even if you win, what do you get at the end of the what day? Do you get it? Yep, exactly. Petty gets you that though. Like when you do all of that, that's what Petty gets you. Like if you continue on with that, Petty will leave you by yourself, but letting the mm. universe handle it will bring you more. You know right. what I mean? So I definitely agree with that. But that's a great thing. I didn't realize that. I mean, I, I I realized that he was alone at the bar, but I didn't equate that to the to you know him being alone and being petty. You know, but that's that's actual factual. And my mom does that too. It 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 didn't work on me until a good thirty years of my life. That's when I was. Or I'll let the universe see. And let the universe give it a try because all this other stuff I've been doing had been working for me. But it's great though. So, you know, I just want to clarify. I don't want nobody to think I'm nuts on this live that's watching. No. Me. <laughs> Did y'all watch the, the end credits, the credit card uh, at the end with the. Yes. Oh yeah, my goodness. With the footage? With the, yeah. 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 And the, uh, <laughs> the, the black librarian with the doll. <laughs> Oh, you know what I thought about too? He had to rent out the library to do that. He had to rent out the library, the, the office space. I about the actors, but then I'm like, yo, you had to rent a space for your petty. Like you had to rent a venue to, to do that. You know what I mean? That's, that's a level that you can only have when you have access to funds. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was like, Earn got money, money. He got, right. Yeah, he got that, yeah. <laughs> we going yeah. to therapy and we got this whole charade mm -hmm. happening. Earn and made some I bank. mean, episode one, my man left his car at the mall. Yeah, he I mean, he's, he's yeah, at another he level. Let him have it. Yeah. Ball on another level, y'all. But well, no, I think that even way that ties back into Al, even though we were translating it to, oh, he got so much money, he wants to give it away to therapy. Like, no, you have that much money you that have, you were yeah. able to give it away and be this petty. Exactly. Exactly. It's 15%.
Um, listen, y'all, this has been this is exactly what I thought it was gonna be, and it turned out even being even better. These is why this is why I have you know my man B and L and Tyra and this awesome chat. This has been the this is the conversation I needed. This is why I love the show. This is why I love uh these conversations because it's always fire. Um, and speaking of fire, you know, we got some dragons tonight, y'all. So we will we, we'll be back a little bit later on that. But listen, I can't thank y'all enough. Um, I don't know if there is a, a schedule or something that we can maybe all link back up again a couple weeks from now or the finale or whatever, but I would love to have every single one of y'all back talking about this show. Uh, Cause I, I have a feeling, I don't know what it is about me, but I feel like, I feel like Teddy's going to make an appearance in this season somehow, some way. And if that happens, we, we oh, definitely got to link up to talk about that. If Teddy comes back, especially, I guess we'll, we know that, um, our cat Williams coming back. So we can expect some characters making some returns. Some wait, 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 Teddy, didn't he blow his head off? He did be, but uh, his, his uh, you know, you never know. You never know with this oh my world. God, that's you never horrible. know. It might have some connections, uh, especially with the ghosts. We know that there's ghosts in Atlanta. So okay. we'll see. We'll see, B. But uh, tossing to you first, Brandon, again, bro, the new braids, fire, as, as, <laughs> as it says here. Uh, so I'm excited to, to see what you got lined up for the people, which on that note, Brandon, why don't you let people know, again, where they can find you and what is all the awesome content you got lined up for the people this week? Man, uh, I'm I'm playing catch up, you know, having some technical difficulties, but I you got to push forward. That's just some of the back end stuff that goes on. Um, I have my moving news roundup show popping off later tonight. If I do postpone it till tomorrow, just check my notifications and you will know. Uh, you can follow me on social media right there, Twitter, Instagram, just my opinion 84, and subscribe on YouTube, just my opinion reviews. But the show. Also have uh, trailer reactions for uh, the, Whitney, the new Whitney Houston movie and also Atlanta uh, season four, episode three. I'm going to be talking about that later. Also, I'm still going to do my review for Do Revenge and uh, episode four of Rings of Power. Also next week, I'm going to be reviewing, uh, I think it's Lou on Netflix with uh, Journey. Um, what is the name? Smollett. Uh, yeah, Smollett. Um also, yeah, Atlanta. Um, uh, and later on tonight, I, I have to uh, um, finish watching or start watching uh, Andor because I'm gonna be covering that as well. The latest Star Wars show, um, as you can see on the screen, got my Silent Twins review up with Letitia Wright and um, uh, Lawrence Thomas. Um, also, End of the Road, Woman King, all that right there. Bug Breaking, Barbarian, Honk for Jesus. I have a few other things as well that's coming. I just can't I think of it. I can't think of it right now. It's probably on my calendar. But if you just subscribe, you're going to get some trailer reactions, movie reviews, and TV recaps. It should be a ton of fun. Listen, Woman King is a, is a whole nother stream within itself. Check out Brandon's <laughs> review on all those things he talked about. Barbarian, all the great content. Be uh, It's always an uh, uh, honor and privilege to have you. Oh, he disappeared on us. Uh, he's, he's coming back. He's coming. But it's always great to have you on, B. And I definitely subscribe to his channel. Tyra, the stage is yours. Uh, let the people know where they can find you and what's the next bit of awesome content you got lined up for them. Just come on over and follow me on Instagram. Like, I'm not the biggest, like, social media person, so I don't have a Twitter and ticks and talks and stuff, but follow me on Instagram. But as far as my channel, like, there is a lot of content. Be sure to come and check out my trailer reaction. This is probably, like, one of my first trailer reactions of uh, the new Whitney Houston biopic that's coming out. Come and check out my reviews for Atlanta, my reviews for uh, Raising Canaan. Uh, I have all of my reviews up. I have one more, actually, for the Mike Tyson series. And I also, of course, have my throwback stuff going on i just did a really good breakdown of why do fools fall in love give y'all some frankie lime and tea that was really really fun and coming uh next week i will definitely be talking about new jack city somebody just played for that and even getting back to atlanta with them saying you know shoot shooters was you know the jamaican film was mid i have somebody paid for that so that's coming up and i also have um let's see Five heartbeats. Somebody pay for that, and that's coming up. Oh yeah, that's my jam. <laughs> Fire. Fire. So yeah, I will be singing. It will be a party. Be sure to come over and subscribe. Do not miss any of this. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, the reviews are always great. The throwbacks is getting the thing I love about uh, Struggle Tyrus channel is uh, the, the new lens. Obviously, when we're older, you different perspective on life. Uh, you can see things differently. So definitely check her out. And also, 
I, I saw your trailer reaction last night. We need more of those trailer reactions, uh, Tyra, because it was, uh, especially that film. Yeah, it does look like, you know, another paint by numbers uh, biopic, but hopefully it it surprises us but those biopics are, are so kind of wait you said it was a pain by number what you said yeah just, yeah it, it looked yeah it was it looked very kind of on the nose very you know the glam the lie i, I hope that it gets a little bit deep. exactly exactly which uh you know that's kind of the norm with those but again check her out again by the time this video is finally uploaded all their links will be in the bio but again tossing it to ul again uh so glad to have you on talking about atlanta and uh hopefully we can have more conversations in the future but why don't you let people know uh, where they can find your content and what's the next uh, bit of content you got lined up for them? Cool beans. So um, thank y'all so much for having me. I um, do movie reviews and recaps, TV shows as well. Um, I'm a, I'm the newest YouTuber of the bunch. Okay, I just I just started a year ago. It's been so much fun getting to connect with y'all, and I just definitely want to give everybody on today um, their flowers. I really really appreciate y'all. I have watched y'all for a long time. Um, so to be on with y'all, my little my little day is made. I'm about to go give me an adult beverage and have a great Sunday because this is a great way to start off my day. Um, but, you know, I really appreciate the way that y'all provide content and it's consistent because I'm out here trying to give y'all as much as I can. Um, so <laughs> I'm doing um, the what am I doing? Handmaid's Tale 1 and 2, episode 1 and 2. I'm going to drop that today. And then I'm going to give um, my thoughts on the episode of House of the Dragon um, today as well. Well, that's not coming out today. It's coming out tomorrow. But um, yeah, so just stay tuned. I'm trying to do, I want to make sure that I can be consistent. It's very tough for me um, to be consistent okay. with shows, right? I'll start a show and do episode one. And then next thing you know, life comes slap me in my face and I can't do <laughs> the rest of the episodes. So I'm trying to be really consistent with it. So, um, you know, y'all are very much an inspiration to me. I really, really appreciate all of the things that y'all have done and shown me how to do based upon what y'all are doing. Tyra sis, especially for you, they, they don't have but seven black female people in this space. So yes. to be on with you today, I'm really, really appreciative um, of y'all. And, you know, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Mm -hmm. I love connecting with folks. Um, and I'm very, very talkative and chatty in my community tab. So check me out. Yes. 100%. So again, guys, by once this video is uploaded, Tyra's L's and B's information will be in the description. Uh, and again, hopefully we can link back up again and talk about this uh, this crazy, awesome show. And uh, L, your, your team is, 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 is looking, I know you're watching the game, but uh, Tom Brady's not looking so good right now as far as uh, <laughs> some interceptions. And it's a tight game. So hopefully you get that dub to complete this great summer. You're about to pull that W. I'm not even worried about it. As soon as, yeah. as, soon as I pay attention to the game, we're going to win yeah. it. I got there the same go. jersey that they have on today, the white colorway. We're gonna pull a W today. It's, I already hey, know that's I hear you. It's and Brandon, no, no offense, B. The, the, the Cowboys, man, it's 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 always a struggle. It's always a struggle. Uh, I know your quarterback's man. out for six don't seven act like weeks. I'm from Texas, Elliot. Don't play. Hey, the, the, what about <laughs> them play. cowboys, Tyra? What about them damn cowboys? What about them, Elliot? Don't oh, play. Man. Oh man. <laughs> well, look, guys, uh, and uh if you guys can stick around before once we end the stream, I want to uh talk to y'all for a bit when we before we head out. But thank you all for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Come back a little bit later tonight, though, because we will be talking about them dragons, y'all. We got our live watch along at 745. I got a theory too on it. Too. Oh I yeah, gotta, oh, I want to yeah. see if what I think is gonna happen. Is oh, gonna it's a hey, L. It's a wedding, and we know yeah, what yeah. weddings look like in Westeros. So it's going down. So it is going Westeros. down. We talk about oh, petty. God. These Tigerians, they are petty and very nasty. Uh, but look, y'all, we'll see you later tonight for the watch along and the, and the discussion for House of the Dragon and a lot of content coming up this week. But again, for myself, L, uh, B, and Tyra, we appreciate you all. You have a great Sunday, and uh, again, we'll Thank see. You.